good afternoon, everyone. Um, we apologize for the delay. We have had IT issues, but it's now good to go. So thank you for your patience. This is um, Chair Manet Bell, and we will go on forth with our agenda of the day for June the 17th, 2020. I call to order the Metro Historic Zoning Commission meeting of June 17, 2020, out of an abundance of caution and pursuant to recommendations from federal, state, and local health agencies regarding avoiding group gatherings due to the COVID-19 coronavirus. This meeting is a teleconference meeting. Advanced public comments were possible through email, mail, and voicemail. We will also take live comments via phone, and that number, which I will repeat several times during the session, is 629-255-1911. And please hold your call until the project you wish to speak about is announced. At this time, I will take a roll call of the commissioners in attendance, and when I say your name, please say present. Vice Chair Stewart. Present. Commissioner, Commissioner Fitz. Present. Commissioner Jones. Present. Commissioner Mayhall. Present. Commissioner Mosley. Present. Commissioner Price. Present. Thank you. Now the commission must vote on the record that the COVID-19 pandemic requires us to hold a telephonic meeting as permitted under the governor's executive order number 16. I'm asking for a motion to hold this electronic meeting. Uh, commissioner, to... commissioner yes, this, is a, this is Commissioner Stewart. I move that the meeting agenda constitutes essential business of this body and meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second by Ben Mosley. Thank you. Are there any discussions to the motion? All right. I will take a roll call of the first and second motion and when you say, when I say your name, please unmute and respond. And because it's clearer to say yes, I, I will ask you to say yes or nay. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Thank you very much. So before we begin our agenda, I'd like to um, acknowledge Commissioner Kidd for his service to the commission since 2007. And we hope to honor him and Commissioner Boyd who recently resigned once we meet in person again. I'd also like to welcome former council member Mina Johnson as our newest member serving as the planning commission representative. We hope she is listening in today and will be joining us officially next month. Also at this time, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the passing of Dr. Revis Mitchell. Dr. Mitchell's impact on history and preservation is extensive. He served as Dean of History at this university. Since 1984, he served on the planning committee for the Nashville Conference on African American History and Culture, which is um, uh, provided by the Metro Story Commission, one of the sponsors, excuse me. Dr. Mitchell also served two terms on the Metro Story Commission from 1999 to 2007, and also as a chair in 2007, and in 2008 received the Metro Story Commission's Achievement Award. And additionally, he served on the Metro Historic Commission Foundation from 2014 to 2020. We extend our sincere sympathies to Dr. Mitchell's wife and family, his dear friends, and the Fisk University family. I'd ask that we please honor him with a moment of silence. Thank you. 
pursuant to the provision of section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that a final hearing before this commission is appealable to the Chancery Court of Davidson County or the Circuit Court of Davidson County, vis a statutory writ of certiorari. You are advised to seek your own independent legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements are met. You should also seek independent legal advice regarding the applicability of the writ of certiorari to the specific decision of the Historic Zoning Commission. For each case, there will be a public hearing. We ask that the applicant keep their presentation to under 10 minutes. They may reserve two minutes as rebuttal of public comment. We ask that the public keep their comments two minutes unless they have previously requested in writing for five minutes as a representative of a group or organization. We have not received any such requests for this meeting. During the public hearing, staff will first read any comments received in writing and no voicemails were received. Finally, members of the public calling in will be heard. Ms. Ziegler, are there any proposed changes to the agenda? Yes, we ask that the design guideline consolidation project be deferred again until we can meet again in person. The applicant has requested deferral of 1228 4th Avenue North, and there's been a request to remove 1707 Holly Street and 16 Gartland from the consent agenda. And if that new agenda is approved, then we will hear those at the end of the public hearing. Thank you, Ms. Ziegler. Is there any discussion about those revisions to the agenda? I see no hands raised. I am requesting a motion to accept the revised agenda. Madam Chairman, I so move. There's a motion. Is there a second? Commissioner Jones, I second. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? If I see no hands, then I will call for the roll. And if uh, call your name, when I call your name, please say yes or nay. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Okay, thank you. And before we, we begin with the first case, Ms. Siegler, are there any council members who wish to speak? Councilmember Withers sent an email, so I'll just read that when that particular case comes up. We don't have any other calls or um, anyone on the queue from who's a council member. Okay, thanks very much. Now is the time for the public to call in if someone would like an item removed from the consent agenda by calling 629-255-1911. Items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. Items removed from the consent agenda will be moved to the end of the agenda. And first, Ms. Sajit will read the cases proposed for the consent agenda, and then I will ask if anyone would like an item removed for discussion. Ms. Sajit? Ms. Sajid, are you with us? Um, are you muted? Yes, I, I was able to unmute. Um, all right, the consent agenda. The first item on, on consent is approval of the administrative permits issued for the month. In addition, an outbuilding are proposed at 25, 2510 Oakland. 1707 Holly Street has been removed from the consent agenda and will be heard at the end of the meeting. 903 Gilmore is a request to convert an outbuilding to a detached accessory dwelling unit. A DADU and addition are proposed for 1611 Franklin. 1724 Fifth Avenue North is for an addition that includes a setback determination. 1514 Cedar Lane is a request for an addition. An outbuilding is proposed for 1004 Lawrence Avenue and 1610 Gartland has also been removed from consent and will be heard at the end of the meeting. Staff recommends uh, approving these projects along with their applicable conditions, um, with the exception of 1610 Gartland 
and 1710 Holly Street. Thank you, Ms. Sajid. Does anyone have any uh, items to be removed from consent? I do not see any hands raised. Uh, Robin, do we have any received any requests over the phone? No, we have not received any calls. Okay. Commissioner Mosley, moving approval for the amended consent agenda. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Commissioner Mayhall, I second that motion. Okay, thank you very much. Any other, other discussion? Other, no other discussion, so we'll call for the roll. Vice Chair Stewart. Yes. Commissioner Fitz. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Mayhall. Yes. Commissioner Mosley. Yes. Commissioner Price. Yes. Thank you. We have approved the uh, revised agenda. Now is the time for anyone to call from the public for public comment regarding infill at 202 6th Avenue North. That number is 629-255-1911. And Ms. Baldock will be our presenter. Great. Uh 202 6th Avenue North was constructed between 1935 and 1936 for the Rich Schwartz and Joseph store, a ready to wear shop exclusively for women. The Art Deco design, which is remarkably intact, was designed by the Marr and Hallman firm. The building is listed as contributing as a contributing building to the 5th Avenue National Register of Historic Places District. Staff suggests the commission recommends approval of the landmark to the Planning Commission and Metro Council and the adoption of the existing landmark design guidelines for this property. The applicant is present if you have any questions but has not requested to present. Okay, thank you, Ms. Baldock. Ms. Ziegler, have we received any comments regarding this project? Yes, we received an email from Paula Middlebrook and she writes, I won't be able to attend the public hearing on June 17th, so I wanted to submit a written comment. My comment is that I support the proposed historic landmark overlay and adopting the existing design guidelines for 202 6th Avenue North and 530 Church Street. As a neighbor who lives just a block from this building, I see it often and am heartened it will keep its historic character and continue to contribute to the historic nature of downtown Nashville that is too rapidly being lost. And that's the end of her email. Okay, thank you. All right, applicant, would you like to comment? And please uh, say your name and your address, please. Am I okay. unmuted? We can hear you. Okay, thanks. Hi, this is Catherine Withers with Barge Design Solutions. And on behalf of the property owner, we just wanted to thank staff for the wonderful detailed report they put together. And we are happy to be assisting in preserving this piece of Nashville's urban fabric. Yes, thank you very much. It is very worthy for preservation um, and the designation as well. Commissioners, are, do you have any questions for the applicant? I see no hands raised. We will close public hearing. And if we would like to discuss or have comments on this project, or is there a motion? Uh, Commissioner Bell, this is Elizabeth Mayhall, and I move that we approve the historic zoning landmark for 202 6th Avenue North. There is a motion. Is there a second? Commissioner Stewart, there's a second. All right. I will now call for the roll on the motion. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Thank you very much. All right, we will move on to the next case and it's now time for the public to call in on 530 Church Street. And the number again is 629-255-1919. And Ms. Baldock will also present this project. 530 Church Street is at the corner of 6th Avenue North and was constructed in 1893 to 1894 as an office and commercial building for various tenants. 
It later became part of the famed Harvey's department store. It has both Romanesque revival and Renaissance revival elements applied to the commercial books form and its architecture remains intact. The building is listed as contributing building to the Fifth Avenue National Register of Historic Places District. Staff suggests the commission recommend approval of the landmark to the Planning Commission and Metro Council and the adoption of the existing landmark design guidelines for this property. The applicant is present if you have any questions but has not requested to present. Thank you, Ms. Baldock. Ms. Ziegler, do we have any public comment? Yes, we received the email that was read from Paula Middlebrooks that was read in the previous case. There are no callers. Okay, will the applicant is the applicant online or would you like to speak? Hi, it's, it's Catherine Withers again. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and once again, on behalf of Cornerstone Associates, um, the property owner, we uh, appreciate the staff support and um, we're glad to be preserving both of these buildings that are important pieces of Nashville's history. Very good, thank you so much. We will now close the public hearing and discussions by commissioners, if any. Yes, Ms. Jones? Uh, yes, Commissioner Jones here, and I just uh, want to thank the staff for two great uh, and interesting reports on those last two projects. And also, um, I will move for approval of um, 530 Church Street uh, for the historic landmark zoning overlay. There's a motion, is there a second? Commissioner Stewart, uh, I'd like to second that uh, motion, but also uh, um, echo what uh, Ms. Middlebrooks uh, had to say and Ms. Withers, and uh, and really uh, show the, tell the appreciation to uh, Cornerstone Associates for placing these buildings uh, in the protection uh, to preserve that important part of our history. Yes, well said, thank you. I will now take roll call if there are no other questions or any hands raised. I see none. I will do the roll call and here is Vice Chair Stewart. Yes. Commissioner Fitz. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Mayhall. Yes. Commissioner Mosley. Yes. Commissioner Price. Yes. Thank you so much. Moving on to the next project, which is 701 South 6th Street. And again, the public can call in to the number 629-255-1911. And Ms. Sajit will do our presentation. Yes, this is a request for a historic landmark for the James A. Casey Administration Service Building, also known as the Gerald F. Nicely Building. Uh, this MDHA building was listed in the National Register of Historic Places last year and so qualifies. The Casey Building is significant for its role in the development of Nashville's public housing and for its architectural design. The building was completed in 1943 after being approved by the United States Housing Authority in 1941. The building was designed in the neoclassical revival style by the Nashville architectural firm Marr and Holman. Staff suggests that the Metro Historic Zoning Commission recommend approval of the historic landmark to the Planning Commission and Metro Council and the adoption of the existing historic landmark design guidelines to apply to exterior alteration. Staff finds that the building meets standard five of section 17.36.120. The applicant is present if you have any questions but has not requested to present. Thank you, Ms. Sajit. Ms. Ziegler, do we have any comment? Yes, as Ms. Sajit said, a representative of MDHA is available if you have any questions. And the director has provided you with a letter that reads as follows. I'm writing to confirm the MDHA is in support of the creation of historic overlay and on, on a portion of the property located at 701 South 6th Street. Nashville, Tennessee 37206, as outlined in our historic overlay application. Thank you for your assistance in this process. And he ends the letter with contact information. And we have not had any callers. And Mr. Thomas did have, he's the uh, representative, he did have some trouble logging in, but if you have any questions, I can get those to him. Okay. 
Mr. Thomas has not been able to, I do not see him on screen. Okay. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant or Robin? I see no hands raised. We'll close public hearing. Any other discussion or a motion? Is there a motion? Ms. Jones? Uh, Commissioner Jones, I move for approval of uh, the proposed historic landmark overlay for 701 South 6th Street. There is a motion and Mr. Price? I second the motion. Thank you. There's the first, there's the second, and I will call the roll. Vice Chair Stewart. Yes. Commissioner Fitz. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Mayhall. Yes. Commissioner Mosley. Yes. Commissioner Price. Yes. Thank you very much. Next case is 722 McFerrin. The number again for the public call in is 629-255-1911. And Ms. Warren will be presenting this project. Yes, this application is for infill on a vacant lot in the Maxwell Heights Neighborhood Conservation Zoning Overlay. First, a correction, there is an error in the report regarding the base zoning. However, the commission does not consider the base zoning in design review, but rather the historic context, which in this case is primarily residential until you get to the corner. Your report goes into more detail, but in short, the applicant is proposing to construct a new three-story mixed-use building with a commercial form and a flat roof. Staff has recommended a one or one and a half story building with the residential form. Staff finds that the commercial form is inappropriate for this location. The neighborhood is almost entirely residential. There's one corner commercial area which abuts this lot to the right. A commercial form would be appropriate on that corner lot, but here on an interior lot with residential forms stretching for the rest of the block to the left, staff finds that the form should be residential regardless of the use. The infill is 28 feet 6 inches tall. The historic context includes houses that are between 15 and 27 feet tall, all with pitched roofs, meaning that only the ridges of the historic houses rise this tall. Staff finds that the proposed height, combined with the flat roof form, creates an inappropriate massing. Even a three-story commercial form here would further erode the residential nature of this block, contrary to the purpose of the overlay. In terms of setbacks, the project is shown sitting eight feet from the front property line. To meet the design guidelines, the infill should line up with the historic houses, as indicated by the yellow box here. Staff recommends that the applicant revise and submit a new plan with one or one and a half story building with a residential form. The appropriate height would be between 21 and 27 feet, though a smaller building may also be appropriate. The setback should match the historic houses to the left of the lot. The roof should be pitched and the design should include a front porch. We have provided the applicant with these examples of similar cases where residential forms were used for mixed use properties and conservation overlays. In conclusion, staff recommends disapproval of the application as presented. Thank you, Ms. Warren believe the applicant is present and can you please raise your hand so I can see where you are at raise your hand can you see me uh Mr 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 Williams yes, yes. And we're here is he raising hand? okay all right uh yes we've got quite a few there so I did not see that uh immediately all right um you're up for your presentation or or Okay. Well, this is, I'm Daryl Hayes, the architect for this project with Vivid One Architecture and Brandon Williams, the developer. We're going to kind of tag team this, uh, this presentation. And um, but as you see, um, this lot uh, is zone M-U-N-A for mixed use. As you look at this, uh, this first picture is a depiction of the entire de uh, development from 722 to 726, from the Fairman all the way to Cleveland Street. So it's, it's actually a two-story building with mezzanine lofts. And so uh, it's a two-story, and so the lofts is only about 100 square feet. That's, it's so that we can get the extra square footage in, uh, in the apartments. If not, uh, if we take away the lofts, then the apartments be like micro apartments, only like 400 square feet. And it actually wouldn't be feasible for this development. 
so zone MUNA, uh, the building height is roughly 28 feet. The current zoning actually allows a 60 foot uh, max height building. And so we tried to try our best to, to fit within the historic uh, overlay. So that's why we minimized that, cut it in half to, uh, to roughly 28 feet, sort of try to meet with the, uh, the current guidelines for historic. If you go to the next page, uh, now you can see the entire development, um, the, the building next to it is 720, uh, 726 McFerrin. Uh, it's 95% brick with about 5% uh, hardy fiber, fiber cement siding uh, with large windows, storefront windows, which sort of, you know, kind of give you a, a nice uh, uh, commercial mixed use uh, look there. And, and I'll just want to add here, I think just based on the report that uh, the staff just showed um, is there is a gas station right there next to a a flat commercial roof. Um, I believe you guys have reviewed something similar to that context in your previous committee meeting. Uh, and we also, here we go, next slide, I think you guys will see the actual uh, store. Um, as you mentioned in the report, I think Jen, I think she might have missed out, this would be phase one of phase two. When we purchased these back in 1980s, we actually purchased the corner lot as well as the commercial townhomes. The townhomes are roughly about 28 feet in height. Um, as you see pointed down the arrow, we're about four feet below that home adjacent to us at 720. 720 McFerrin is also zoned commercial. Um, it's currently being occupied and used as a commercial duplex, a four unit Airbnb. Um, in addition to that, there's a driveway, uh, which will create even more of a buffer. Um, I wish the, the new member of the council was part of it as she's part of the planning commission. Planning commission actually supported the MUNA um, because it's in a transitional area. Um, as you see, we're probably within a close proximity to a intersection. Uh, we begin to, the only reason why we phase it out in two because um, to staff recommendation, even if we combine the lot, they still proposed a pitched roof, which we didn't feel was adequate. Um, I think when we originally submitted ours, we were a little bit higher. We reduced the, um, the size and the scale. Um, as an African-American developer, we wanted to put a, uh, a minority and bring some inclusion. It'd be very difficult to do that with a pitched roof um, and with the setback. Uh, across the street, the setback is five feet um, back. Uh, we're proposing eight. Uh, we actually have an additional setback on the second level, uh, which will propose even some more uh, setbacks. So as a corner lot, I don't think we would want a 20 feet setback all the way around the whole corner. Uh, I don't think the neighborhood would actually like it. We wanted to keep a historic presence with an all brick building, um, keep it rich, something you would see in Germantown, 12 South, any of our neighborhooding um, historic area um, and allow us to also put some parking in the back. Um, it'd be very difficult to use that mixed so mixed use bulk zoning uh, due to the, uh, the nature and what they're suggesting. Uh, a building hasn't been there since the 1950s. Um, it's been zoned commercial since 1970. Um, as you see in that picture, uh, that townhome extends even further past our proposed building and even extends past the commercial building, which is why you see the bulk zoning of uh, commercial. Um, and if you can go to the next slide, please. You'll see the history of it. Um, back to if you read the report that Jen submitted that there was actually a pitched roof at the corner. Um, so if we go back to the, the historic context, you know, how far do we want to go back? Um, because, you know, back to the history of it, it just doesn't make sense. I think it's allowing uh, the neighborhood to move forward, but also keeping a historic uh, context. Um, and then the height is 27, windows is okay. I think the report, they wanted a windows on the third floor. Reason being, as Daryl stated, there's only 100 square feet up there just to give it a loft feel. 
Uh, those units are very small units, allow some affordability to the area and the community. Um, I think small units and, and the people that are local restaurants, you know, people who work at the local restaurants and there they can afford it to kind of um, work and walk around in their area. And then also a, a quick takeout, obviously with the COVID, we want to provide some more uh, commercial as it's close proximity to Maz Tacos, Pharmacy Burger. Um, when we purchased the townhomes and it was developed, um, there wasn't a four-way stop light. So obviously there's been some change. Even the city has saw the, the continuous frequency of that area um, and it's probably been more notable. Um, as you would go back to the guidelines, and if you do a search in the guidelines, there's nothing that states commercial. So we're at a disadvantage because there's nothing that we could actually go on. Um, we wanted to use it and some may say, hey, why don't you guys do it all together? Well, um, based on what the staff recommendation, regardless what we, so we, we broke it out and did 722 as is a vacant lot. It's been vacant for quite a while. Can you go to the next slide, please, whoever's leading that? And, and, and you'll see the, adi the additional buffer, right? So we're transitioning away from that pitch roof. Um, I think there was kind of a, misleading on the, on the, the first presentation as we wasn't able to show that um, that additional buffer of what's existing right there. So we're even away, even farther away. Um, as we take the picture standing up, you'll see us, we're actually looking up on that building. So uh, I think the pitch roof to the report Jen said was 21, we're at 28. Um, so that's just four feet from the start of the home. If you center it and if you look at the actual survey uh, provided by Dell and Associates, which is a pretty known survey and pretty accurate. Um, they're about it'd be additional six feet of height. There, there's a there's the site slope six feet um, from the building next. If you look at the building, the house, du the duplex next door. There's a six foot difference um, right there from from where they sit uh, to the middle of the lot. So, so actually, you know, the, the scale will actually even go down. And then by the time you get to Cleveland Street, there's almost really it's a 10 foot uh, difference. So, uh, so we believe that the, the scale of the project is actually appropriate since it's a sloping site and there's a six foot difference uh, between the two, um, two lots right there. Yeah. And can you go to the next slide, please? I know we've got about 10 minutes here. So, and then, so we wanted to kind of give the commission just a, context right so you've got is in a historic area you see a roof right there and then a flat roof um that house uh, the flat is a little bit taller at over the 28 feet that we proposed um so just to kind of give you a visual next slide please and then also you see new infields that's surrounding the area right it's it's this is actually on maxwell avenue and our uh, proposed building is in the Maxwell Heights Historic District. And this is actually on Maxwell Avenue. For those who are familiar with the area, you've seen a lot of tr transitions. Third, fourth, 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 and our building is a lesser scale significantly. Even on the corner, we're on a four-way intersection. So just to kind of give some context of how small, what we're doing, um, I think you, you'll see uh, we're keeping, obviously these are next to a historic neighborhood. We're keeping that historic, that orientation close with it. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Um, and then also, as you see, this is a recent one at, at 307 South 11th Street. I think, I uh, believe, and you'll have to ask the staff here that why they disapprove because of residential homes. These residential homes are actually even smaller um, it was recently approved uh, with a flat roof proposed. Um, it has pitched roofs all on the area, all down the street. Uh, right now, currently, we're next to a gas station. As you see, as you go on to Cleveland McFerrin, next to a intersection. So we'll start, you know, phase one and then phase two of that development, making sure that it'll flow. Um, and then next, Mr. you'll Williams. see. These, I'm sorry, Mr. Williams. You, what your time is up. Okay. Um, this last three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate the explanations. Ms. Ziegler, do we have any public comment? Yes. Leslie Boone, the president of the Neighborhood Association, writes the following. I had an opportunity to review the plans for 722 McFerrin. The leadership of the Maxwell Heights Area Neighborhood Association is in agreement with the staff recommendation to deny the project in its current iteration. 
The request stands in stark contrast to existing construction within the conservation overlay segment of the Maxwell Heights neighborhood. In the staff recommendation report, several factors led you to disapprove the current plans. Example, height and scale, setback and rhythm of spacing, roof form, proportion and rhythm of openings. We appreciate your review of the current plans and we'll wait to hear the final outcome of your recommendation. And I believe Mr. Davis is with us and would like to speak as well. Scott Davis. Mr. Davis, are you online? You can unmute. Please give us your name and address, please. Up. Um, unmute yourself, please. There you go. Up. <laughs> Back and forth on that one. You're still on mute. There you go. Uh, are we good now? Yes, sir. Hey, um, how's everybody? This is former Councilman Scott Davis. 5th District, um, 918 Thomas Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, um, 37216. All right, can you, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. All right, no problem. I just want to thank all the staff members for all their work and the commissioners um, for taking the time out of their busy schedule to serve on this very important um, committee. Um, the context of this, um, um, Brandon's family has owned this property for since the 80s. Um, when they originally acquired this, um, this corner looked a lot worse. The gas station was in way worse shape. Um, Brandon's mom and his dad did an awesome job in kind of getting this back to life because I was a I was a young kid when they when they developed. I remember when this area was kind of kind of wonky and weird. Um, I believe I may have the dates wrong. I believe we put the historic overlay over there in about 2006 or around there. I may be wrong. I, I'm sure Robin knows the date uh, when we did that in the max when we added that. Um, one thing I wanted to point out about that area, there are his, there are commercial businesses on that strip. Um, there is a doctor's office there, and then there's also a realtor's office. And where we did the step down, which was approved by Planning Commission and I believe historic, when when two houses up, we allowed the realtor office to stay there because it was in a historical uh, house that met the requirements. I believe I may be paraphrasing because don't have a lot of time. Now the neighborhood and the associations, both Maxwell and Greenwood, uh, we approved that concept for that commercial part right there, and. Um, at the time, Brandon's mom, when we first looked at that, um, was wanting and, and was describing her family doing a three phases um, on that vacant lot there. Because at first we thought about adding some additional parking for the restaurants, but that never went to fruition uh, with, with Brandon's mom, um, Kate Crowley, and the other restaurants around there. Um, so, you know, we want to revitalize that area. Mr. Again, Davis? Uh, yes. You have, you, can, you, can you make closing statement there? Yeah. In closing, um, I know this may not fit the historical context, but this is what the neighbors wanted. You know, and we can go back and look at past emails and several meetings for that area. For that area. And all this, right. this is the only way we can accomplish this. Thank you. Yes, and sir. Thank you for all your time. Thank you. We have a caller. All right. Please say your name and address. Caller, are you on the line? Hello. Caller, are you there? Uh, just a moment. I'm going to pass you through into the meeting. Uh, please start by stating your name and address for your comments, and then you will have two minutes. Uh, and I'm going to pass you into the meeting in three. Good evening. This is Jessica Williams, and I am 115 Gaming Place um, in 37206. And I just wanted to um, take time this afternoon to come on and show my support as a resident who's lived in the community for the last eight years and has had the opportunity to take part and see a lot of the growth and development happen in the area after looking at the site 
plans and seeing the location. I believe the developer as well as the architect did a great job with um, really trying to add a development into the community where there can be some commercial space with a uh, living space at the top. And so I just want to send my support and uh, help you approve the project. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate the call in. Anyone else? All right. No other call-ins. We will close public hearing. And commissioners, do you have any questions to the applicant at this time? Mr. Davis, you have your hand raised up. Um, if not, in, oh, okay. All right. But we close public hearing anyway, but just wanted to make sure. Uh, commissioners, any questions to the applicant? Okay, seeing none at the moment, we are under discussion. Uh, all right. Madam Chair, this is Commissioner Stewart. Um, yes, sir. I, uh, I think this is an attractive development uh, and would work in a lot of places. However, given that the neighborhood adopted the conservation overlay and that we do have a, a full string of residential homes along the way, I think that uh, a lot of the discussion was about the use of this structure, which we don't have any purview over. So uh, so whether it's commercial or residential or mixed use, um, I think that a form that's more appropriate to what the overlay was designed to expect and require, uh, especially given the neighborhood association um, uh, voicing their concern about this would be much more appropriate. So uh, I, I'm not in favor of the approval of this. I, I tend to agree with the staff recommendations. Thank you. At least with this this iteration. Okay. Correct, Commissioner. Yes. All right. Any other commissioner? I don't see any hands raised right now, but you're probably thinking about it. Okay, um, Commissioner Mosley. Yeah, I just I want to clarify. Um, there, it was a lot of discussion about the um, entire. Is this case for a specific lot or for the development in in total? Yes, this is Jenny Warren. I can answer that. Um, so this particular application is for just that one standalone building at seven twenty two. That's what they're considering phase one of their project. And then the corner is phase two, but we're not looking at that today. We're just looking at 722. Yeah. So this, this, is, this is the applicant. I just wanted to put why uh, we- sir, uh, Mr. Applicant, the uh, public hearing is closed and we're under discussion at the moment. Thank you. And I, I, I wanted to make that clarification before making a point. Um, because I think that um, it's it's crit critical that we're not glomming the whole development together. We're, we're considering this specifically. Certainly, the applicant could um, replat and and combine it. I, I think my comments would would still be the same in that case, whether it was a single lot or two individual lots. Um, the, the points that are raised in the staff's recommendation with respect to how this fits into and transitions to the neighborhood context, I think would be the same in either case. And regardless of what may be permitted by MUNA, the guidelines themselves would, would infer that a, a transition that is um, not purely commercial, that then steps back to then start the residential um, would be the case either way, whether it was it was platted as a single lot or, or whether it's presented as is, which is phase one, which would set the tone. So I, I think um, with that said, I, I tend to, uh, while I understand the arguments made by the applicant, um, because what's happening in the corner might be appropriate and then you bleed it into this lot is not a valid argument to ignore some of the other pieces of the guidelines and the recommendations of the staff to, to make this project transition um, more harmoniously into the neighborhood fabric. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Jones. 
Commissioner Jones here. Um, yes, I, I, I echo both uh, previous commissioners in this, and I know the applicant mentioned uh, one you know, that we had under discussion last month, and I know in previous commissions we have um, you know, uh, given, I guess, more, a little more space um, when these areas come up to kind of uh, bridge commercial with the residential neighborhoods. But in this, normally in those cases, the commercial structures that are, you know, even contributing are larger in size. And so, you know, if you're on the cusp of that to kind of uh, make the size you know, a good buffer or, or a good transition from the residential to the larger, smaller residential to the larger. In this case, and I drove by this uh, site and all the surrounding streets yesterday, and I mean, the commercial structures are, are themselves very small. And so in this case, this would be really the only large building uh, in several blocks that I saw. Um, I know the, those, then it was mentioned in the staff report, the townhomes across the way um, but those were built prior to the overlay, and so they're not considered contributing, obviously. Um, and also, they're they're massing. They just have that weird pop up that kind of like the I don't know what it even would be called, but the massing isn't even that that much um, because of that. So I, I just tend to agree with the staff report on this. Just um, since this would be one of the largest, you know, it would be the largest building I think in in a bit um, because the commercial structures there on the corner are all flat roof, small single story structures. So the idea of um, it fitting into the neighborhood, I think while it, you know, it is again, as Commissioner Stewart said, a nice project um, for, for a lot of different areas um, for this specific area, I don't, um, I tend to also agree with staff reports. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, other commissioners, uh, the other three that haven't commented yet, do you have other Yes, Commissioner Price. Uh, I agree with Commissioner Jones and Stewart and I'm persuaded by the staff report. I'd like to make a motion that in regard to 722 McFerrin, um, that I, I move that we uh, deny the application according to the staff report. Okay, there is a motion by Commissioner Price. Is there a second? Uh, this is Commissioner uh, Mayhall. I, I second that motion. Thank you. There's a there's a first. There's a second. Um, is there any other discussion before we take the roll? I see none. Other hands. So I will call your name. Yes or nay. Vice Chair Stewart. Yes. Commissioner Fitz. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. We will move on to the next uh, case, and that is at 920 West Eastland. Again, the number to call is on screen, and it's 629-255-1911, and Ms. Baldock will present. 920 West Eastland is an application for infill and outbuilding on a vacant lot. Here are the drawings from the staff recommendation. After the publication of the staff recommendation, the applicant sent revised drawings making the requested changes to the dormer and foundation. Staff finds that the revised drawings adequately address the conditions for infill and that the infill meets the historic context and height, scale, and design. The applicant includes, application includes a one-story outbuilding. The outbuilding includes an overhang that is five feet, 10 inches deep, which staff finds to be too large as is at most, as it all, is almost providing covered parking, exceeding the 750 square foot pr footprint. Staff recommends that any overhang should just be over the doorway, extending no more than two feet from either side of the door and no more than three feet deep. Staff recommends approval with the conditions laid out in the staff recommendation. And just noting that the applicant has submitted drawings that adequately addresses conditions two, three, and four here. Okay, thank you, Ms. Baldock. Is the applicant here? Um, fine. Mr. Martin? Mr. Martin?
Okay, we do not see him on our list or, uh, okay. Ms. Ziegler, do we have any comments regarding the project? We have no comments and we have not received any calls. Okay, so we will close public hearing and we will ask the commissioners to either have questions to the staff or discussion, please. Oh, I think Commissioner Price, is that your hand raised for this project or? Sorry, no. Okay, okay. commissioners, please remember to uh, unraise your hand so that we're know, we know if you're wanting to speak on the current project. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, discussions? by the commission. Okay, vice chair. Um, Madam chairman, with uh, with respect to this project, we appreciate the applicants working with the staff to uh, to find uh, reasonable solutions to this. And I recommend, I move for approval uh, based on staff recommendations as amended with their comments uh, in today's meeting. There's a motion, Ms. Jones. Commissioner Jones, I second. Okay, there's a first, there's a second. And if there's no other questions, I will call the roll. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. The motion passes. We'll move on to 1914 Holly Street. Again, the number to call in for the public is 629-255-1911. And Mr. Alexander will present this project. Okay, um, can you hear me? Here we go, uh, excellent. Um, this is 1914 Holly Street. Uh, it is a building that is a non-contributing house. It was damaged by the March 3rd tornado. Um, the current proposal is uh, to enlarge the house with an upper story addition and with new wraparound porches on the front and rear. Uh, as you see on the site plan, there's an existing building uh, with the porches. Um, thank you. With the upper story addition, the building will be one and a half stories tall with a roof ridge height of 29 feet tall above grade. The eave height will be 10 feet from the finished floor level or 12 feet, seven inches above grade. The staff finds this height to be appropriate. The roof form, rhythm and proportion of openings and materials meet the design guidelines um, now there are the side and rear elevations. Uh, as in the staff recommendation, you read that staff recommends approval of the additions with the conditions noted in the staff recommendation. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Um, I understand the applicant is He's available on the phone if there's any questions, but he didn't have a presentation for you. Um, and we have not received any public comment or any phone calls. Okay. So we will close public hearing. And commissioners have any questions to staff or applicant in discussion? Commissioner Mosley? Uh, noting that there's no deliberation, I move approval with the staff's recommendations. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Commissioner Price? Second. All right, there is a first and a second. I will call for the roll. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. All right. And the motion passes. 
We move on to the next case, which is 1813 Holly Street. And again, the number on the screen is 629-255-1911. And Mr. Alexander, you are on presentation. Okay, 1813 Holly Street. Uh, this is another house that was lost in the tornado on March 3rd. And what is proposed is a new house and outbuilding. The proposal primarily meets the design guidelines with a few exceptions. Uh, I believe the applicant is in agreement with all of the exceptions, so I'll not repeat what's been written in your staff recommendations, except to say that we recommend that the front setback meet the surrounding context, the drawings be revised to address some discrepancies, and that the front dormer uh, be set back as is typical of conditions uh, regarding review and conditions regarding review of, of materials and foundation height. For the outbuilding, we recommend that the wall height be lowered so that the eave does not extend, extend beyond 10 feet above grade uh, or the floor level, and that additional drawings be submitted. Uh, and since this will be a detached accessory dwelling unit, that a restrictive covenant for the DADU be submitted uh, prior to permitting. Uh, in summary, we recommend approval with the conditions as outlined in the staff report. All right, thank you, Mr. Alexander. And the applicant, I believe, is present. Uh, however, and thank you again for working with staff, applicant, uh, and agreeing to the conditions. Uh, all right. Um, we will, Ms. Ms. Ziegler, do we have any public comment? I just wanted to double check. Um, Mr. Atkinson, did you have anything you wanted to say before we moved on? Uh, yes. Can you hear me okay? Thank you. Uh, thank you, commissioners. Uh, I'd like to extend a special thanks to Robin and Sean for their help on this one. Um, as they mentioned, uh, the homeowners for this particular home were in their basement when the storm came and unfortunately uh, destroyed their whole home, but luckily no one was hurt. Uh, and furthermore, the, the homeowner for this project has also been leading the front lines on the COVID fight. Um, she runs the, the ICU at Vanderbilt taking care of all of our COVID patients. So I uh, just wanted to give a special thanks to the staff for their help with this one and uh, for getting these homeowners uh, back into their homes soon. Um, the only thing I would like to say is after measuring some things, we do uh, in fact agree with everything staff has asked for in the recommendations. Um, we would ask the commission only to consider a 24 foot front setback instead of a 25 foot. And uh, the reason for that is there's a sewer easement in the back of this lot. And we're sort of hemmed in by how far we could push the garage and daddy on this project. So um, if it's found to be acceptable, we would ask for a, a one foot reduction. So making that a 24 foot front setback instead of a 25, um, only so that the, the cars can you know, safely um, be parked in the garage without you know, worried about being backed up into the house. Um, thank you. Mr. Atkinson, is that uh, recommendation number one? I'm sorry? Is that recommendation number one? Uh, yes, yes, that's correct. At the front setback of the primary building be 25 foot to match the historic context and you're asking for a 24 foot? Yes, that's correct, Commissioner. Okay, just wanted to be really clear on that, thank you. All right, since we don't have any other public comment. No public comment and no calls. Oh, no calls. All right, we will close public hearing and have discussions by the commissioner or questions to the staff. And I see two hands raised, uh, well, Vice Chair Stewart. Um, commissioner, this is a question for, uh, for Sean. The uh, recommendation number seven, it's a minor point, but the recommendation number seven as a restrictive covenant for the detached accessory dwelling units be submitted if the building is to have a second dwelling unit. I would think that that would probably if the property is to have a second dwelling unit rather than building since we don't really look at two dwelling units in a day day. Does that make sense? 
Uh, yes, uh, that is a good clarification. Um, if yeah, if the second, if the detach, if the outbuilding is to be a DADU, then a restrictive covenant would be required. Right. Yep. That's good. Yes. Thank Just you. Just to sort of be cleared up. Okay. So does wording need to be cleared up on that? It, okay. Who whoever does make the motion, vice chair, would need to clarify the uh, language, um, the verbiage on uh, Article 7, just for sure. the commission to note that. Okay, um, Commissioner Price. And I'd like to ask Sean if he'd like to comment on the request to revise the proposed setback to 20 full feet rather than 25, since that's not part of the staff recommendation. Can can you say that one more time, Commissioner? Um, we, you're you're resounding back there on your phone. Okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. I wanted to ask Sean what he thinks about the re this uh, request to adjust the setback to 24 feet rather than the staff recommendation of 25. Um, I mean, one foot isn't. You know, it's it's. Uh, nearly a negligible dis difference, but I think if if they're given the choice, we would prefer to have the distance between the outbuilding and the house reduced from 20 feet to 19 feet. Uh, it still allows, uh, um, you know, it, essentially instead of shifting the house forward, uh, it just reduces the, the distance, but behind. That makes sense to me. Um, does I assume in, in whatever um, motion is made, though, that needs to be made clear as to what we're voting on? We'll note that, Commissioner. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other commissioners? Vice Chair Stewart? You have your hand raised? Uh, thank I you. Just, uh, I still had my hand up, sorry. No, it's okay. Um, so at this moment, we have number one and number seven to know if someone makes that motion. But are there any other questions? Um, so this is a, this is Vice Chair Stewart. I, I'm prepared to make the motion. Could, uh, could Sean reiterate the, uh, the, Preference for his uh, change in the distances. And, and Vice Chair, uh, Commissioner Jones also had her hand raised. So after you answer, oh. as, after the question is answered. Okay. This is Robin. May I suggest that for number two, we simply add a new site plan be submitted prior to issuance of permit showing the revised front setback and one foot less between the two buildings than what is shown in the current site plan. That's great. Commissioner Jones, did you have a question? Yeah, Come Commissioner in. Jones here. Yes, uh, I was gonna ask, um, you know, I'm trying to look at the plans on my other screen and, um, you know, I I was gonna, I guess the, I mean, I don't know the pr procedure, ask the applicant, um, since we have now, you know, brought up the 19 foot from the 20 feet, um, uh, you know, again, 24 to 25, uh, I don't, I mean, I don't, I guess I don't have a problem with that given that the lot has a constraint on it. Um, and then just to, you know, I, I honestly, I would just like to see what uh, Mr. Atkinson has, has to say regarding the um, smaller distance between the two structures, if uh, that's uh, okay with other commissioners. Okay, so Mr. Atkinson does have his hand raised. So Mr. Atkinson, are you going to answer that question? Uh, yes, Commissioner. Yeah, so sorry to, to be more clear. Um, the, the issue at, at stake for the homeowner is the 19 feet. Um, so if something were to move to allow that to grow larger, it can't be the DADU um, because of the sewer easement. It's already on the line with the sewer easement. So we would ask to increase the distance between the DADU and the home 
we would have to push it towards the front setback. Um, so we would we'd be asking to push it one foot closer to the front setback to 24 feet instead of the 25 that staff has proposed. And again, that is uh, solely just so that there's adequate room for a vehicle to maneuver between the house and the dadu. Thank you for that clarification. Um, commissioners, are we, we're understanding this uh, sort of shift a little bit here. Do we have another comment? Commissioner Jones. Uh, I mean, I would just, Put the other commissioners see what they think, but I mean, with that, as he just answered, um, again, I, I'll get Sean's thoughts on, or I'd like Sean's thoughts on it. Well, but just the one feet. I mean, I, you know, I'm fine with them kind of working with staff to either have it, you know, between 24 and 25 feet from the front setback, so that uh, you know, at the sewer easement is avoided. Um, with you know the minimum possible um, space to to maneuver uh, vehicles, um, you know I don't know if that's language that works or not, but um, you know that's what I'm thinking, just to to get a solution. Um, since I don't think the 24 for 25 feet isn't a huge deal for me, so just to work with staff on that, seeing as there is a site constraint on what what might work. Other commissioners? Commissioner Mayhall? I agree with Commissioner Jones. It, it, since there's a, um, a sewer easement and there's mitigating circumstances there, I don't see, have a problem with the extra foot. Okay, thank you. Look at the, the Commissioner Mosley. Uh, I'll, I'll reiterate the, the point the two previous commissioners made I think you know a, a one when we're dealing with a setback sometimes 12 inches makes a significant difference um, but when you're dealing with a, a setback and we're asking for a, a 125th reduction or thereabouts um, that I, I would find that to be appropriate and likely imperceptible along the street face just not measured on, on a on a plan map but in, in perspective I, I don't know that it will be perceptible to you know the the average person walking by and given all of that given that there is um, a constraint that a majority of the rear yard cannot be used by the applicant for for building a structure okay so staff would we need to reiterate that and it's up to whoever makes the motion what they want to okay so we would have to uh, reword number one a little bit um, whoever's making the motion. Uh, Commissioner Mayhall, do you still have your hand raised? Do you have a comment? Okay, thank no. you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, Commissioner Mosley. Yeah, I move approval of 1813 Holly Street with um, the staff recommendations with the following um, exception on Item number one, that the uh, front setback be no less than uh, 24 feet, zero inches. With the uh, discu discussion for the record noted. Okay, how about the, uh, a little bit more clarity on number seven as well, that uh, Vice Chair made reference to on if you look at that sentence on the half of the sentence, if the building is to have a second dwelling unit, uh, to clarify that. Commissioner Mosley, that would be simply changing the name, the word building to property, if you agree. Uh, that, the, so I amend the motion accordingly. Okay, there is a motion. Is there a second for the motion? Commissioner Jones? Commissioner Jones, I second. Okay, there's a motion and I will call the roll. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhall? 
Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Okay, that motion passes. Points no opposition. We will move forward to 3004 Belmont. Again, the number to call in for the public is 629-255-1911. And Ms. Sajit will do our presentation. This is a request to demolish a non-contributing house and to construct a new single family house and detached accessory dwelling unit. Staff finds that the pro proposed demolition meets the design guidelines. The plan before you meets the design guidelines for height, scale, setbacks, and rhythm of spacing, materials, roof shape, and orientation. As proposed, the infill is oriented to Belmont Boulevard, and while the site plan shows an existing driveway from Belmont Boulevard, it is noted that that is an existing driveway that serves 3006 Belmont next door. Vehicular access to the subject property will be from the alley at the rear. Here are context photos of historic homes in the vicinity. The photos on the left show the historic context on the same block face as the subject property. The photos on the right show the context across the street. Christ the King Church and school are not in the overlay, but the two-story building at 2911 Belmont Boulevard contributes to the historic character of the overlay. The proposed structure is one and a half stories with height and scale that is appropriate for the immediate historic context. The infill has two story eaves at the rear. Given the immediate context of the block face, staff finds that a one and one half story form is more appropriate than a two story form for infill at the site. However, staff finds that a slightly taller ridge ridge height as well as two-story eaves at the rear can be appropriate since the immediate context includes some larger two-story structures. The proposed DADU meets all design guidelines and criteria in the zoning code. The DADU incorporates a single taller eave on the front as a design element to reflect the design of the infill. Even with this taller eave, the average eave height of all eaves meets the design guidelines. In conclusion, staff recommends approval of the infill and outbuilding with conditions as set forth in the staff recommendation, finding that the request meets the design guidelines. And um, I believe the applicant has agreed to those conditions. Thank you, Ms. Sajit. I believe the applicants are online. Would you like to comment? Okay, we do not see them online. Ms. Ziegler, do we have any other public comment? I will just reiterate, if there's someone else representing Mr. Stackhouse and Mr. Stringfellow, um, if you could raise your hand, if you're already on, uh, okay. Mr. Feller's here. All right, Mr. Feller? Can you hear me? Yes, and please- Hello, hello, can you hear me? Yes, and please uh, say your name and address just for the record. Sure, Jason Feller, 1604 Crockett Hills Boulevard. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you to the uh, commission for your dedication. Thanks to the staff, uh, particularly the uh, to Melissa's for working closely with us the last couple of months and uh, getting this to where it's uh, supported. Um, I'm thrilled to be part of a project on such a prominent and historic street and uh, here to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you. Robin, any other public comment? Yes, we did. We received a letter, um, an emailed letter from Peter and Leslie Herman, and they write, we understand that on June 17, 2020, the commission will review plans for the property to be built at 3004 Belmont Boulevard, replacing the current structure. Since 2003, Leslie and I have lived next door at 3006 Belmont Boulevard. We've recently had the opportunity to review the designs for the new 3004 Belmont Boulevard home. While we're not experts in historic zoning issues, we want to express our general support for the project and its design, which to us evokes many of the historic shapes and character of both the original structure and other homes in the neighborhood. Thanks for your consideration of our support for this new project by White Goat LLC and for your prior approval of our 2010 home renovation. Let us know if we can assist in any way. And that ends their letter. And there are no calls. Okay. We'll close. Um public hearing, uh, unless the commissioners have any other questions to the applicant. All right, not at this time. All right, uh, commissioners, 
Discussion or motion? Vice Chair Stewart. Uh, Madam Chairman, with uh, respect to 3004 Belmont Boulevard, I move for approval based on staff recommendations. Commissioner Jones? I second that motion. Okay, there's a first and a second. I will take the roll. There's the other questions. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. All right, there are no oppositions and the motion passes. We will move to 1511 Russell. Again, the number for the public to call in is 629-255-1911. And Ms. Sajit will do the presentation. The house that was located at 1511 Russell Street was destroyed in the spring tornado. Um, here you see the photos. The plan before you for the infill meets the design guidelines for height, scale, setbacks, and rhythm of spacing, materials, roof shape, and orientation. As proposed, the infill is oriented to Russell Street and vehicular access to, to the site will be from the alley at the rear. The proposed infill is two stories with a height and scale that are comparable to the historic house that was damaged by the storm. While the remaining historic context on this block of Russell Street does not include other examples of two-story historic homes, staff finds that the proposed height and scale to be appropriate for this lot since the massing is similar to that of the historic house that was destroyed by the storm. Staff finds that the proposed infill is appropriate in terms of height and form. And the next slide, we have the side elevation, side and rear elevation. And in conclusion, staff recommends approval of the infill with conditions as set forth in the staff recommendation, finding that the request meets the design guidelines. Uh, and I believe the applicant has agreed to these conditions as well. Thank you, Ms. Sajit. I see the applicant is online and would you like to speak please say your name and address yes hi my name is cheyenne smith the address is 1627 long avenue and, and i agree with the staff's recommendation thank you mr applicant <laughs> all right is there any other uh public comment Ms. ziegler there's no public comment and no calls Okay, we will close public hearing and commission will discuss or make a motion. Commissioner Jones and Vice Chair Stewart. Uh, Commissioner Jones first. Yes, Commissioner Jones. Um, and again, for all these cases that we're hearing um, and applicants with uh, tornado damage from the spring storms, I just think uh, on, on all of our behalf, we um, I wish everyone well and, and are glad um, that we can still be performing this work to try to get you back in your homes um, as quickly as possible. And uh, thank you for working with the staff and thank you staff um, for all the hard work you've done in the past several months. Um, and then with that, uh, regarding 1511 Russell Street, uh, I'd just like to move for approval with staff recommendations. Okay, there's a motion. Vice Chair Stewart. Second. All right, there's a second. Uh, if there's no other comments, we will make a roll call. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. And Commissioner Price? Yes. Okay, thank you. There's no opposition, so the motion passes. We are moving to 1200 Rosa L. Park Boulevard, and the number to call in is 629-255-1911. And Ms. Warren will be our presenter. Yes, this application is for the construction of a new one-story bank building. The new construction will replace a non-contributing bank building that was damaged in the March 3rd tornado. This block of Rosa Parks is on the edge of the overlay and has no contributing buildings. The applicant is proposing a one-story commercial building. The proposal meets the guidelines in terms of height, width, scale, and building type. 
The front setback from Rosa Parks will be approximately 63 feet. This is due to specific conditions on the site, including fill and grade issues, which require the building to be located in the center of the lot, similar to the placement of the storm damaged previous building. Staff finds that the proposed setbacks would not be appropriate elsewhere in Germantown, but given these site conditions and the lack of historic context, staff finds that the proposed setbacks could be appropriate on this site. Other site issues include the curb cuts and surface parking. Again, staff finds that these conditions could be appropriate as they are pre-existing and due to the lack of context on Rosa Parks. As is standard, staff recommends review and approval of materials prior to purchase and installation. The signs indicated here will also need to be reviewed once additional information is submitted. In conclusion, staff recommends approval of the project with the conditions outlined in your report. Thank you, Ms. Warren and believe the applicant is on the line and would you like to um, comment? Yes, my name is Mark Naylor. I'm with the Roberts Group for Architects and Engineers. Address is um, 239 Southland Drive, Lexington, Kentucky, and we work for Regions Bank. Uh, we're in agreement with all the um, conditions um, listed and thank staff for their help and we'll follow up and make sure we provide all the remaining details um, that um, were not part of the original application. So we request approval and I appreciate everyone's help so we can get the bank reopened. Thank you to the applicant. Ms. Ziegler, are there any other public comments? No, there are no public comments and no phone calls. All right, we will close public hearing. Um, commissioners, discussion or a motion? Chairman Bell, this is Elizabeth Mayhall, and I need to remove yes. myself from any discussion or vote on this since this is my employer. So Okay, so noted. Thank you, Commissioner. I see no hands by other commissioners. Uh, do you have a discussion or a motion? Uh, Madam Chairman, this is uh, Cyril Stewart. Uh, with respect to 1200 Rosa Parks Boulevard, I move for um, approval uh, with the staff uh, conditions. Okay, and Commissioner Price. Second. All right, there's a first and a second. I, uh, any other discussions? If none, we will call the roll. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhaw? Oh, she's a, okay. She has uh, abstained. Uh, Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. All right. So the motion passes. We are moving to on to 913 Manila Avenue and the number again to call in from by the public is 629-255-1911 and Mr. Hoffman will present the project. Good afternoon, 913 Manila Avenue is an application for construction of a new residence on this recently subdivided lot behind the historic 19th century home Lookaway at 909 Manila Avenue. The proposed new construction is two stories with a height of 32 feet, five inches from grade, a width of 33 feet, three inches. Although it is taller than the neighboring historic building, staff found it to be appropriate for several reasons. The context is limited, in this case, just one historic building in the immediate vicinity as the other homes on Manila Avenue are recent construction or small non-contributing homes. Because of the limited context, the commission has approved two-story infill applications on both Manila and Granada Avenues recently. The application meets the design guidelines for setbacks, roof form, and materials. Staff recommends the usual condition of administrative review of windows, doors, and roofing, and additionally that the lap siding should be smooth-faced and have a maximum reveal of five inches. The side elevations that you see here show a preponderance of square or horizontal windows. Staff recommends that these be reproportioned to be uh, more traditional vertically proportioned windows and the applicant has agreed to this revision. The site plan includes front yard parking, which is not normally permitted. Uh, we discussed with the applicants some options, um, including flipping the structure on the lot to allow for a driveway on the left side. Uh, accordingly, staff recommends that the proposal not include the front yard parking that you see here. In conclusion, staff recommends approval with the conditions noted in the staff recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. 
uh, applicant is online and would you like to comment? Please say your name and address. Uh, yes, my name is Brad Sayers with Foursquare Design Studio. Address is 1201 4th Avenue South, Suite 109, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we agree with the comments regarding the windows and have addressed those items as long as well as the, the grading to be reflected on the elevations. Um, the client is concerned about the parking pad, uh, seeing as how there is a uh, existing uh, abandoned alley that is on the right side of the property. That, uh, that takes up 15 feet of the space, which does not allow for any parking uh, driveway to go in that area. Um, so we're, they're really hoping to be able to have uh, front yard parking if possible. Okay, so you are in agreement with all the other recommendations? Yes except for number one, which is the parking to be moved to the rear yard. Okay? Yes. Okay, all right. Thank you. Um, Ms. Ziegler, do we have any other public comments? There are no public comments and no callers. All right, we will close public hearing and have discussion by the commission. Question to the applicant or staff. Okay, Commissioner Mosley. Yeah, uh, I know we've closed the public hearing, but if, if we could, uh, I'd like to hear a little bit more from the applicant on the um, this alley. It's, 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 the applicant said it was abandoned. Is it property that's owned by the applicant or is it an abandoned alley that is um, not included in the in the parcel? If, if it's an alley or, or a throughway, I, I would think that it, it could be improved to allow parking in the rear. I, I just want to understand a little bit more about the constraints that might force parking to the front or if it is more of a convenience. Sure, Mr. Sayers, you are you are able to comment. Uh, yes, um, looking at the survey on the right side of the property, there is a 15 foot uh, abandoned alleyway um, and uh, according to zoning uh, that, that we reached out to, that is, um, that is uh, we tried to look into reducing the size of that since it, since it is abandoned and will no longer be used as an alleyway um, to help be able to shift the home uh, to the right of the property more and that would allow a better location for the driveway. Um, there's currently also a telephone pole, I mean, a uh, electric pole that is in front of the, uh, if you're looking at the property, uh, you'll see the overhead that is just in front of the home. And uh, that is preventing them from being able to get a driveway on the right side of that property also. So not only do we have an abandoned alleyway, but there's also a, a power pole there that is uh, in the way on the right side of the home. Uh, and, and I guess confusion still remains on, it, it, it looks like from the site plan that the alley is platted into this lot. Is that That's, a true statement or not? Yes, sir, it is. And, and yeah. so if it's platted into this lot, is it no longer in the public right of way? And, uh, and you may not be able to answer that question. It, that's just perplexing that if it's no longer public um, property, <laughs> then well, who, who gets to say you can't move the house? That, that's just curious to me that, that you couldn't move the house over well, if it's abandoned and unused. Yeah, and I, I totally, I totally agree. And from what I understand, uh, the the client uh, reached out to zoning to see if there was anything that could be done with that abandoned uh, alleyway since it's not being used as an alley. And uh, they were told to contact Public Works um, to look at reducing the size of that 
abandoned alleyway on the right side. Um, but um, that that's the only information I have about it. Um, that the only way, I mean, we they talked to zoning and zoning uh, told them to, that they would have to discuss it with public works. And, and I understand certainly um, being in the biz that in these COVID times, getting getting responses is is, um, is is challenging and, and hampered a bit by that. I, I think uh, certainly not an expert, but knowing what I know about how, how that works, it, it may be uh, a, a few more hurdles to overcome and, and maybe headaches to endure. Um, but that just seems curious that if it's abandoned and it's on private property now, that that it, it wouldn't be permitted uh, because you, you certainly do with the the right of way that you're the peers you're giving up some additional right away in the front to meet the new um, street, you know, um, widening there. And you've got a power pole that provides some certainly some constraints and restriction to what you can do that um, it seems unreasonable that that you, you wouldn't be able to use your, your property in that way. But um, I, far be it for me to be an expert on that. Thanks for, for the I trouble. Totally what, what was that? Please come back. Who was saying that? Mr. Sayers or Commissioner Mosley? I, I just said thanks for trying to provide some additional clarity. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, that is a bit perplexing if we don't have that confirmation of that uh, important. Uh, Vice Chair Stewart. Um, in looking over the information in the staff package, it does show that the alleyway was abandoned but it said the easements were retained. On one of the other surveys, it showed that uh, there's a proposed manhole to be located there. So I think a lot of the question with this would be whether those easements are for maintenance and access to the sewer line in the back or for electrical or other utilities. So with the easements retained, uh, they, they should be able to have a driveway over that, uh, but, but probably not a structure. Good comment, good catch on that, Vice Chair. Okay. Any other comments? So, uh, Commissioner Price? Given Commissioner Stewart's comment that a driveway should be allowable, over the existing former alleyway easement. Um, I'm inclined to support the staff recommendation at this point until we have more concrete information uh, that can be presented by the applicant as to why they can't put the driveway on the, on the, on the right side of the house. I feel like yeah. we're kind of flying blind a little bit here. Um, and I would appreciate before, before I grant you know, relative, relative, something that we're not we're not in the practice of doing, which is granting front yard parking, um, that we need better information uh, regarding what's going on with this abandoned alley and easement and the ability to put the parking on the side of the house. Yeah. Yes, Commissioner Price. Yes, uh, Commissioner Fitz. Do you have a comment? Yes, ma'am. I was actually going to say what uh, Commissioner Price said. He um, spoke exactly what I was thinking, so I'll leave it at that. Okay. I believe I agree as well as chair that we need to have more information about the uh, abandoned alley. Uh, but I, I, I do concur with the other commissioners that number one uh, recommendation still is uh, is a good one. So it, it's pretty uh, clear on that. So is there another discussion or is there a motion? Mr. Mosley? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion um, to approve with the uh, staff recommendation, including item one with um, with this additional uh, bit of information that the applicant, uh, if the applicant can produce some correspondence and, and or other information um, that definitively prohibits them from um, allowing parking in the back that the staff would, would be um, able to, to 
reconsider that and, and allow um, parking in the front uh, while it's discouraged the, the constraints to the site may not permit it. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second, Commissioner Jones? Commissioner Jones, I second that motion. All right, there's a first and a second. If there's no other discussion, I will take the roll. Okay, Commissioner Stewart? Aye. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Okay, there's none opposed, so the motion passes. Move forward to 1808 Holly Street, and the number again to call in for the public is 629-255-1911, and Mr. Alexander will do the presentation. Okay, 1808 Holly Street. Uh, this is a proposal to construct a new duplex, replacing a duplex structure that was destroyed by the tornado on March 3rd. The project meets the design guidelines in terms of height, scale, and orientation, uh, and width. Uh, the side elevations show just a single window on each story uh, for both the left and the right. Uh, that's at the midpoint on the upper story and near the rear on the first story. Typically, historic houses in the area have window openings roughly every 10 feet uh, with vertically oriented windows, uh, as you see on the front elevation. Staff finds that additional windows are needed on the side elevations to be compatible with the historic context. The known materials are appropriate. Uh, additional information is needed on the window and door selections, uh, masonry selection, and the roof color. Uh, staff recommends approval of the proposed two-story duplex construction at 1808 Holly Street with the conditions as outlined in the staff report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Alexander. And Mr. Is, uh, is there, excuse me, there, is there the applicant online? And that would be, could you raise your hand if you are? Ms. Jordan? Okay, uh, I'm gonna patch you in. Okay, we do have a call in by the applicant. Address, you'll have 10 minutes to speak and I'll pass you through in three, two, one. Staff recommends approval of the proposed two-story duplex construction. Uh, Ms. Jordan, can you uh, mute your computer or your tele television? Thank you. There you go. Yes. Could, can you please say your name and address? You might have to mute, mute your TV or something that's uh, reverbing in the background there. There, does that help? Very well, thank you. Please say your name and address. Yes, my name is Joyce Jordan and also my sister, Jerry Tanksley. My address personally is 1545 Rock Springs Road, Cumberland Furnace, Tennessee. Okay. And do you have a comment, Ms. Jordan? I guess. Um, the building that we're talking to you all about today is my mother's building and um it wasn't a historic building and it was just like the sister building that still remains standing next for door. next door um we're trying to rebuild this at a reasonable rate um she doesn't have um much income this was half her income it was a reasonable rate rental rents than that we only charged a thousand dollars per side um, she had good insurance coverage, but not to build a historic home. Um, we have only questions on three of the items that they came up with for changes. Okay, can you give us those numbers then? Number one, number, no, no, number, number three, in regards to the roof pitch, that 
the as per plan makes it consistent with the sister property located next door at 1806 if we increase the pitch of this roof then i'm afraid with the historic coast store on the other side at 1810 holly street it's just a story and a half structure of which the existing what was the piece of our roof line towered above that house already if we increase the pitch even greater than that then i feel it's going to be standing out worse than that also all the houses across the street from this house are one story and again we're on a budget and adding we only got two hundred forty thousand dollars from insurance in which to rebuild this entire two thousand total square foot unit so we've got financial constraints upon us and we do plan this is still going to be a true duplex we're not going to take it for bottle property to redeem and have it needed off as two separate attached homes okay then um, on item number four for the additional windows, we've submitted two more plans, adding additional windows on the side. Again, these are only five, um, 500 square feet approximately per level for this housing. So, and they were two bedroom, one and a half bath units, and that's, we're building back on exactly the same foundation that was there. We're not trying to add square footage to the building, anything like that. And when the building had no windows on the side prior, and so the sister duplex next door has no windows on the side. And again, to put a bunch of windows on the side of the building, it, it cuts away from there's no square footage inside where to place a bed or a couch or living items when you're dealing in such small space. They sent us samples of buildings that were, you know, three and 4,000 square foot buildings. That's you know double the size of this so it makes a really big difference and i don't see where he submitted the the samples that we gave um you know we tried to modify but we're still trying to have enough room for these things to be efficient units for people to live in now i think we can live with putting a two additional windows downstairs but the main issue is with the bedrooms upstairs when you only have a 10 by 12 foot bedroom one wall is full of windows. One wall has your entryway. The other wall has your closet. You do, you need more than six feet in which to place a bed and end table, or otherwise then everybody going down the street are gonna be sitting there looking at the back side of people's furniture hanging out the bottom of the window. Okay. Any other comments on the recommendation? No. So, so, so far, I, I think uh, we heard you say you're, you are questioning number one, number three, well, I'm just, number, number four. Okay, well, that number one, that's um, because, I mean, that we're going back, you know, with full eight foot tall ceiling. I don't under, I guess I don't understand that part. I mean, okay submitted the plans with the same ceiling heights that were there before and that matched the sister building next door and you know like and again it wasn't a historic building but like if, if the recommendation comes back at building you know nine ten foot high ceiling we don't have the financial budget to rebuild at that kind of additional cost okay we, we will probably have some more discussion so uh, do you have other other comments Ms. Jordan, That's it. are you good? What now? Do you, do you have any other comments? No further comments now. Okay, very good. Well, thank you for for your explanations of that. And um, I will ask Ms. Ziegler if we have any other public comment. No public comment and no callers. And uh, staff can certainly continue to work with them on condition number one. It's very common. It's really about the foundation height, not the ceiling height. Okay. 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 Never mind. All right. Um, since we have no call-ins and no other uh, public comment, we will close public hearing, and the commission will now have discussion.
or question. We're we're thinking about it, right, Commissioner? <laughs> we're looking at we're looking at plans. Since we're on phone, it's the silence that we uh it's okay. Okay. No, Commissioner Fitz. I just I had a question and wanted a clarification. And if you all already mentioned if staff already mentioned this, forgive me, but on the drawings, the pitch is shown four to 12, but the recommendation, oh, sorry, to increase it. So you want it to at least increase it to five to 12. Between five, 12 and six, 12. And six, 12. Okay, sorry, I read that wrong that you were asking for an increase from five, 12 to six, 12, but I see that now, thanks. Okay, Commissioner, uh, Vice, Vice Chair. Um, I, uh, I want to uh, sympathize with the owners uh, with the loss of their uh, structure and the uh, challenges with rebuilding. Uh, I do think that the plan that's been developed is a good appropriate plan. And uh, I think that the staff recommendations, it's a minimal increase in the roof pitch that brings it into conformance with what's typical in the neighborhood uh, that should not have any uh, real cost implications. And uh, as far as the windows on the side, uh, these, these rooms are, are pretty deep. The bedrooms are 11 and 12 feet deep. And so I think that there is enough room there for windows as well as to, um, uh, to have furniture. Uh, the great rooms down below are, are very large rooms. And I think the whole structure could uh, use the addition of, of more natural light. So I think that staff recommendations uh, are meant to uh, bring it into conformance with what the uh, guidelines uh, and um, and requirements are, uh, but also uh, tend to uh, improve the building as well uh, with uh, the, with a reasonable uh, aspect to it. So based on uh, on those with respect to this project, I move for approval with the staff conditions. Okay, the vice chair has made a motion. Is there a second? Commissioner Jones? Commissioner Jones, I second. Right, there's a first and a second. If there's no other discussion, then we will take the roll. Okay, Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhall? Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Okay, there's no opposition, so the motion passes. And uh, to the applicant, uh, yes, please, please continue to work with staff and they will uh, be happy to answer more questions as well. Which they will move over to 2300 10th Avenue South. And the number to call in again is 629-255-1911. And Ms. Baldock will do our presentation. 2300 10th Avenue South is an application for a rear addition with an attached garage which requires a setback determination from both the rear property line and the side street property line. Base zoning requires that the addition be at least 20 feet from the rear property line and that the attached garage be at least 20 feet from the side street property line. The addition is supposed to be about 15 feet from the rear property line and 10 feet from the side street property line. Staff finds that these side setbacks to be these setbacks aside in the rear to be appropriate for several reasons. First, the addition is not overly large. It is no taller or wider than the historic house, and it does not more than double the footprint of the house. The lot is relatively shallow at 137 feet in depth, and it is rendered even shallower by the fact that the private drive that services this east side of the block of 10th Avenue South between Waldkirch and Carruthers is not act an actually a mapped alley, but is part of private properties. Um, so here is um, the um, survey, and um, you can see here that appro approximately the back 10 or 11 feet of this property um, cannot be built upon without severing the other lots from this block from the vehicular access from Waldkirch. Um, 
so because of that, this just to say this alley, um, no, or lock, so-called alley, um, is that you can see kind of on the site plan here, it says it's subject to possible right-of-way claim, but no record at the time of survey has been found. So there's been no um, uh, restrictive covenant or any kind of, um, you know, restrictions of, um, filed that were found to kind of say that this, the access is allowed. Um, but by not building upon and kind of pushing everything up from the back of the property, it allows access to the interior lot so those people can retain their access. Um, the lot's shallowness and the alley on the site make it challenging to have an addition and a detached garage. Again, if you take the alley into consideration, you really just have about 127 feet of depth. Staff finds the proposed rear setback is appropriate because of the peculiarities of the lot and because the addition will still allow for sufficient space for cars to access the private drive on the property of 2300 10th Avenue South. Regarding the setback facing the side street, although codes requires a 20 foot setback from the side street, MHCC has approved 10 foot setbacks for corner lots like this one, when the addition is no wider than the historic house, as is the case for this project. The setback will not negatively impact the historic character of the house or the district. Here are the elevations for the proposed addition. Uh, again, staff finds that the proposed attached garage is appropriate because of the shallowness of the lot and the fact that the lot slope allows it to be at the basement level. The addition's overall scale is appropriate to the historic house. And then staff recommends approval with the conditions listed in the staff recommendation. Okay. Ms. Baldocker, okay, you had a, a list of your voice. I want to make sure your presentation oh, yes. was done. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm done presenting. So, um, <laughs> but I believe there's public comment that Robin has to read. Or, okay, yes, thank you. Ms. Ziegler? I think the applicant is here. Yep. All right, Mr. Hodge. Yes. All right. Oh. Hello. Yes, please say your name and address. Hello, my name is Sonia Smith, and I live at 2300 10th Avenue South. Okay. Would you like to comment on uh, this project, your project? I must start by saying thank you to Robin and the whole historic staff. I couldn't, I am where I am today because of them. I, um, the family has owned the house since 1964, the property, let me say that, since 1964. We, the, my grandparents paid for 6,850 square feet. We've paid taxes on 6,850 square feet. So we've owned the house for 56 years. We've maintained it for 56 years. We've always done the right thing. We've never um, had anyone else to complain about anything else that we were doing. The, um, in 1965, um, the city made a pathway for the use of the trash pickup. There was never an easement agreement. No one has ever agreed to it. None of, there's only one other um, property owner that's been here as long as we have on this same side. He never agreed to it. There is nothing in writing. My grandparents, and then once I took over managing the property, I never agreed to allow that part of the land to be used by Metro. I've also sent them e emails and they have agreed um, that they are public works, um, identifying that I would have to move the trash on the other side. I really don't need it because it's already cut in. So either they could pick up the trash on Walkert or I could move it closer to the other neighbor's land that's not asking to use of their land. But I also want to say that we, I have lived here for 56 years and that I remember when the neighborhood was neighbors helping neighbors. I remember when it was the inner city and now I, I am a proud member of 12 South. Our family is 12 South. We support the, the businesses around 12 South. My grandson attends the schools. He's going to Glendale. He's in Rose Park. And is that my second? I have one more issue, and that is 
It's also a safety issue for the students and the family members that are taking their students to Waverly Belmont because of the hedge and that, that narrow passageway, not an alley, that narrow passageway, you cannot see to the left or the right once you pull out of that alley trying to make a left or a right, nor can you see anyone trying to pass, to cross that, uh, that passageway. It's a cut in there, so you cannot see anyone coming up from the left or the right. So it's very dangerous for the families that are bringing their children to school. And we are now, in this time, many of them are riding their bike. They don't know to stop at the alley. They'll stop at the stop sign, but they will not um, yield for any traffic that's coming down this passageway. The reason that I have not blocked it or cut it off now is because we were taught to do the right thing. I wanted to make sure I took the right channels, did the right thing with the neighbors, with the city, did all of my research. And before I blocked, you know, I, I hate to say blocked it, but take use of the land that we have not been able to use since 1964 and pay taxes on. And and um, it's because we live alone. We're females. And we're here by ourselves on the corner. The other part of that is I, I told the city, I, I told planning, I said, well, if that's my land, then, you know, the city can buy it. Is there, they told me that was water under the bridge. There's nothing you can do about it. Well, I'm asking for uh, um, recommendations or approval to um, help me put that bridge over that water. How about that? <laughs> um, I just I just want to make sure that okay. you know that I am trying to do the right thing. Yes, ma'am. And we are to us out. Okay. So, let's say some more. Yes, Ms. Smith, we, we do thank you for working with the staff. We, we know the challenges of this particular property and have seen it in the past, so um, we want to express that to you. And also, I think you, your architect has uh, been working with, uh, with you and the staff. So um, with that awesome. said, um, do you have any other comments or can we... Can we... Uh, right, um, right. Mitch, I'm so sorry to say, I forgot to say thank you to Mitch. I absolutely let him do, I, I stepped back and said, Mitch, you make it work. And, yeah, and, right. And, yeah. And, okay. but, but again, Robin, hear me from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Very well. She hears it very well and the staff hears it very well. As, and thank you again for, for working with the staff and continuing to work with the staff. Okay. So, um, just want to make sure you you are finished, Ms. Smith. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Hodge, Mr. Hodge is on the line. Okay, well. and all right, uh, Mr. Hodge, are you uh, there and having comments? Mr. Hodge, you are unmuted. Uh, you might be muted on your side. Okay. Uh, are you able to raise your hand just so that we know you do want to speak? Okay, um, we may come back to you, but um, that so we do we have public comment? Uh, we do. Ms. So Eber. if Mr. Hodge comes online, um, he can okay. uh, take care of the rebuttal. Ms. We have multiple emails. Um, I'll start with uh, those that are in opposition. The first one, my name is Brian Edwards and I'm the owner and resident of 921 Wellcourt Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee 37204. I'm writing to let you know that my wife Jessica Edwards and I are opposed to changing the setback allowance to 15 feet for the address 2300 10th Avenue South, where this is historic present. We vote no to allowing this change. Uh, next email, my name is Casey Dykus and I own 919 Wellcourt Avenue and 12 South. Me and my husband, Graydon Dykus, vote no and are opposed to adjusting the setback of 15 feet where there is historic precedence. End of email. And my apologies if I mispronounced their last name. Next email is from Nathan Hubbard. My name is Nathan Hubbard and my wife and I own 915 Walkerch Avenue, just a few houses down from the proposed setback adjustment at 2300 10th Avenue North. 
Uh, we oppose this, this adjustment to 15 feet and the request that the base setbacks be maintained. I've read the staff recommendation in full and inspected the plans attached as well as the updated plans we received in the mail. The proposed project can easily be changed to accommodate the base setbacks and should be made to do so. The owner at 2300 10th Avenue planted four inch posts in the alley to block her neighbor's access this past Christmas. There is zero trust from her neighbors that she will refrain from something similar if given a greater opportunity with the setback adjustment. The setbacks are there to protect you from something crazy at the border of your property. Especially in this case, the setback should be maintained to protect the neighbors. Please do not approve the setback adjustment. Mr. Hubbard's email also included a photograph, and so you received that full email, so you have that photo. Again, I apologize for mispronouncing the first name. Adrian Davis writes, I hope this email will be submitted to the Historical Commission's public hearing for the setback involving 2300 10th Avenue South. I understand I may have missed the deadline, so if allowed, thank you in advance. The 20-foot setback is appropriate and should not be reduced to 15 foot. There is a concern that it would diminish the option to have the alley as a common use of public services, such as trash, trash pickup and utility services. Also a concern for water drainage that may be compromised and led to backflow and flood damage as seen in 2010, the adjacent properties and to this particular property in question. There have been moves in the past by, by Smith to stop common use in, in late 2019 and in early 2020 and worries of this new construction may not work in the best interest for all surrounding neighbors. I believe there are other options like removing the non-livable space connecting the garage to the main house that would allow for the improvements to go as planned without a setback variant. And there are emails in support of the project as well. The first one reads, my name is Calvin Hatcher. I live at 2227 11th Avenue South. I'm a five year plus resident of this neighborhood and I'm in complete support of Ms. Smith's plans for her property. I approve of her plans and I vote yes for the plans for 2300 10th Avenue South. The next one is from Barbara Carruthers. She says, my name is Barbara Carruthers. I live at 912 Walkerch Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, 37204. I approve the plans for 2300 10th Avenue South. I vote yes. Kendra Thompson writes, I'm sending this email in support of Sonia Smith's plan for upgrades to her property, 2300 10th Avenue South. I also reside at 2300 10th Avenue South, and it would be great to witness the plans come to fruition. My vote is yes for the plans for the aforementioned property. Ms. Williams, Jessica Williams writes, I am writing in support of Ms. Sonia Smith's project at 2300 10th Avenue South. It has been a wonderful opportunity to work with her along with Mitch to develop a stunning plan that positively suits the neighborhood and brings strong value. Mrs. Smith has been diligently working on developing her property and as a realtor and developer myself, I wanted to help present a nice single family home versus the two separate properties, which was previously approved by Historic. We look forward to an approval allowing a reduction of five feet on the setback, five setback, which will allow us to move forward to completion as well as fits in with several projects in the neighborhood. Thank you for your time and dedication to serving Nashville. I believe we also have a couple of calls waiting. <clears throat> Mitch is trying to call in. I don't know what's going on with his computer. So. Uh, yes, we have two callers, uh, Ms. Smith. Hello, caller. Uh, I'm going to send you an email soon. Uh, please take me to my desk and your phone number so you can set that up soon. We have a uh, person calling who has been waiting. One. Hello, my name is Kendra Thompson. I reside at 2300 10th Avenue South in the 12th South District. And I would like to say thank you all for hearing us and giving the opportunity to speak today. And I would just like to give some family history on the property 2300, which my great grandmother entrusted my mother with this property. And this property is our home. And our home is our legacy for our family. So we've had a meandering journey and up and through school, uh, and we are we are very appreciative for the oh share with you our vision for our home, for, um, and for our legacy. Oh, son, he loves the he loves the amenities of this neighborhood. 
burger up and just being able to enjoy walking, biking, and playing in this neighborhood that he loves, that I loved as a child, that my mother loved growing up, that my mother's mother enjoyed. And the neighborhood, my great grandmother had a vision for her family and our home. So with that being said, we look forward to enjoying our vision for our home and our family's legacy as we expand. We look forward to enjoying, to continue to enjoy our community which we live, which we will continue to live. We look forward to enjoying a common space. We look forward to continue to contribute to the neighborhood, to expand and as, as, to expand and enhance as the neighborhood expands and enhances. So with that being said, I appreciate everyone involved. I appreciate all feedback, and I look forward to moving forward with our vision for our home. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Do we have another call in? Yes, Mitch. Okay. I gave her two minutes of her own. Okay. probably have a break. I think we're bringing in the architect, okay. Mitch Hodge. Hang on, I'm trying to take a shot right now. Uh, hello? Can we hear? can hear you. Okay, great. Wow. Technology. Um, I am it's Mitch Hodge, I'm the architect for the project, and uh, our office is at uh, 2700 Belmont Boulevard, um, Suite A. Um, Son Sonia's, uh, she's given you a history. She's been there since the 60s, um, early 60s, long time. Uh, the property is, is a very unusual property in that the rear property line abuts the side property line uh, directly behind her. Uh, and then shortly after they had the property in 65, they started using the back part of her property and it slowly developed into this alley. Um, and that, that happened without any kind of um, easement, you know, discussion or right away or anything. It's just, it's just been there. You know, and she's she's lived with it, but it's you know it's as the survey shows, it's clearly her property. There's no right away on record. There's no easement. Um, when I see the property, that's what I look at, and that's what I that's what I work with. Um, so the design we had, um, if you may recall, back in November, this was this property was actually approved for a duplex. It was a little bit larger, but it had two um, two curb cuts, and um, but she's decided to change direction with us and go single family. Um, and it, um, as, as I was coming up with the design, I wanted to come up with something with a little bit more subordinate massing for the addition and then give the appearance of a dadu, although we can't do that. So we connected it and just kind of broke up the massing just to make the spacing a little more um, appropriate for Walkirk, so along that street side. And also to give a little bit of interior yard space um, for this property. Um, I've been working with Melissa and Sean you know, quite, we've been going back and forth with this. They suggested pushing it up. I felt it made the massing big, but it also made that small sliver of backyard behind it kind of useless. So um, that was the direction I took was just to break up the massing, make it a little more subordinate to the house and give an interior patio there. Um, so that's why we're asking for the reduction of five foot reduction in the, um, in the setback to do this. Um, if we have to separate it, it actually pushes the dadu back into the alley more, and um, I don't think that really works to anyone's benefit. I think this plan works well um, with the massing, with the just the connection to the yard, it faces east, so they've got some great morning sun, and um, we ask you know that the design be approved as it is. Uh, and I'll I'll stay on for any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hodge. 
Okay, uh, any other public comments? Uh, we don't have any other call in, so we will close the public hearing and we will have commissioner discussion. We have another call. Jessica Williams is on the is on hold. She she called us, she dropped off. Should we call her? Oh no, I, have a I mean no. Uh, okay, give us one moment to patch her in. Miss Williams, are you there? Okay, I'm going to send you through uh, the agenda. Good afternoon, my name is Jessica Williams and I am at 2115 Gaming Place. And I am here as a realtor and developer working with Ms. Sonia Smith. And I just want to start by saying this project has been, um, I'm honored to be able to be a part of it and to see a woman who is had gone through so much and still here uh, willing to go through the process to develop her property out. When I came into the picture, there was another person already wanting to build uh, two properties on there, kind of doing the whole two on one lot thing. And so when we took time to really look at the property, um, we went from house to house, street to street, really looking at the different projects in the neighborhood to see how this property can really be developed to its highest and best use that will make the neighborhood in 12 South really stand out as it already does, but add to the beautification of it. And so I thought that the perfect person for the job was Mitch Hodge. We already had a, another architect before, you know, which was great, but Mitch really came in and sat down with us, walked this property with us and really heard what our ideas were. And he was able to take the time to work with um, Historic to come up with an amazing plan. The, 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 the plans are night and day different, and we are extremely excited with it. Um, I believe the five-foot setback does allow for just a better property to be designed on this property. And me working in real estate and understanding the importance of land, to know that uh, 10 feet of Miss Sonia Smith's land had been utilized by the city without any sort of communication with her was extremely disheartening. We are in one of the the, the highest value neighborhoods in Nashville and, and 10 feet is an astronomical amount of, of missing land. And so I think here we're just simply asking for a five foot reduction so that we can move forward in developing this project out and adding another beautiful property to the neighborhood. If you look at some of Mitch's work in the 12 South community, um, it is interesting as we're looking on properties that came up on the market and we saw one- Ms. Williams, your, your two minutes is up. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time and I look okay. forward to your support. Thank you, appreciate that. Okay, we will now close public hearing and discussions by the commission. Commissioner Mosley. Yes, a uh, question for staff. Um, um, I've not been able to recall any specific cases, but I, I think taking um, taking the issue of, of the use of the you know the non non platted alley or access passageway, to taking that aside from the conversation, I'm I'm curious about, um, and, and I imagine because there's a recommendation for approval that we have approved um, other rear setbacks, reductions, um, I think pretty commonly in the 12th South District. Is that an accurate statement? I wouldn't necessarily say they're common, but in situations where the lots are particularly shallow, again, with a buildable lot, the area is 127 feet deep, where I would say the minimum depth of most um, lots is at least 150. You know, that's anything less than 150, I think we consider to be um fairly shallow so you know we do think that this one is particularly shallow and you know it's not just it's kind of we kind of looked at everything together that the shallowness of the lot and the fact that the addition really wasn't um you have those cases where the additions are trying to get everything in they're trying to go taller and wider and getting a reduced setback uh in this case the you know the addition when you look at it staff found it to be fairly reasonable in size and not going any taller not going any wider um, and felt that the, um, 
you know, the rear setback, particularly, you know, along the rear was appropriate given the, um, uh, given the, um, the shallowness of the lot. So, you know, although it's not common to have lots of the shallow, it does come up and, you know, we have done it before. And I guess this wouldn't be a one-off uh, in terms of if there were an alley and there were legitimate um, constraints to reduce the setback in the alley, I feel like, well, I can't recall a specific one, I certainly feel like in, in this district, we, we've permitted that. So that that is, I'll take that as a yes. Yes, I don't remember any specifically uh, uh, in this district. I know we have in some other districts where um, the lots are, you know, that you have those certain blocks where the lots just get really shallow for mm -hmm. various reasons, and yeah. In, in my analysis and, and your, and the, staff's deliberation and analysis on it. I, I'm not in disagreement with it. I, I think it, it's, um, you, you, you can't argue it both ways necessarily um, in, in support or, you know, there, there is an access way um, in, in the, rear of the rear of the property. And I think, you know, the, the design is, is in response to that. And um, the side setbacks are consistent with the existing house. You know, the, the existing house doesn't even meet the side setback uh, or well, what's considered the side setback off of Waldridge. Right. So um, that, that was, the, the rear was the only one I had a question about. Thank you. And I think what, I think Mitch mentioned this, but you know, should, if the, you know, if they were proposing a detached garage, you know, we typically allow a, a rear setback of five feet from the rear property line. So, you know, by attaching the garage and kind of pushing it up, you're actually, we're, able to kind of bring it away from that rear property line and allow for the access for the alley. And it, that is certainly noted here that, you know, we can't take, we can't oftentimes give all possible um, order to, you know, to an applicant to do everything that, that we have to, you know, do something that's appropriate and fitting within the neighborhood. But I, I certainly, with those comments, I, I'm, I'm in agreement that having tested several options that this one, you know, fits fits the lot um, better than some of the others that, that were suggested or explored. Thanks, Melissa. Okay, good discussion. Any others? Vice Chair Stewart. Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, it's a um, an interesting situation with this uh, and the longevity of the ownership of this lot and the difficulty with the um, alley or, or a public acquisition of the land and the public use of the land. Uh, a lot of different voices in on this. Unfortunately, you know, we as a body aren't able to address any of those things. Uh, that's the other parts of Metro that, that we don't have any jurisdiction over. Uh, but I think that this is a a reasonable approach to this project and one that the staff has worked with uh, the owners and architect with and with respect to um, uh, 2300 10th Avenue South I move for approval with staff conditions there is a motion and Commissioner Jones uh, yes Com Commissioner Jones I second okay um, there's a first and a second Commissioner Fitz did you have a question or were you gonna second that no, I was just going to second. Okay, very good. We have a first, a second, and if there are no other discussions or questions, I will pose the roll. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. All right. Uh, that was unanimous. There are no oppositions, so the motion passes. I only have two more. Uh, no. Just one moment. Uh, we're trying to um, determine whether we have already been two and a half hours now. So, um, commissioners, would you like a break or you, would you like to continue? We have. Uh, 106 Rosebank and the uh, 1501 Fatherland, and then we've got the other two that were taken off consent agenda. Um, I I would like to take a 10 minute if you all are okay with that. That's fine with me. This is Commissioner Price. 
Okay. Is there a second to this? Just so we're we're all good. Yep. Commissioner okay. Jones, um, sure. I'll uh, yeah, I'll say a, a, a ten minute break uh, would be fine. Okay. All right. Ten minute ten minute break. Thank you for public's patience. I'd like to call in a 629-255-1911, and Mr. Alexander will do the presentation. Okay. Uh, this uh, is an application to construct a new single-family home with a detached outbuilding on a vacant lot. The lot was subdivided from a lot that faces Porter Road in 2014, which was before the overlay expanded to cover this block. The building will have a primary massing with a width of 36 feet, which is compatible with nearby historic houses on comparable lots. The plans show the house having a cantilevered bay on the left side, which extends into the five foot setback buffer. Uh, the scale of the bay is appropriate, but staff recommends that the house be shifted two feet to the right to meet the standard setback requirement. The new house will be one and one half stories uh, and is proposed to be 29 feet tall uh, from peak to grade with an eave height of 13 feet from grade and a foundation height of three feet. Uh, there are no historic houses on the street taller than 25 feet. So staff recommends that the height of the building be decreased to be no taller than 25 feet tall from grade. The house has a side gabled roof with a gabled front dormer on the front. Staff recommends that the dormer shall be stepped back at least two feet from the wall below, as is typical of dormers historically. There will be a shed dormer on the rear that is stepped in two feet from the sides, but not from the rear wall of the house. Staff finds this to be appropriate because the sides are stepped in and the rear uh, is not visible. The outbuilding will be one and a half story, uh, 20 feet, 22 feet tall from grade to the ridge with an eave height of 11 feet. The eave height is one foot taller than is permitted by the guidelines. It will have a side gabled roof with shed dormers on the front and back. Uh, this outbuilding would be a DADU, a detached accessory dwelling unit for which dormers are permitted, but the guidelines or actually standards for DADUs allow them to be only up to 50% of the roof and they are required to step back two feet from the first story wall below. The outbuilding will be separated from the house by only eight feet, whereas typically 20 feet of separation is required. Staff finds that in this is, instance, the shorter separation uh, and a lesser setback are appropriate because the lot size is atypically shallow. It's only 86 uh, feet deep front to back. Uh, staff recommends approval of the proposal with the conditions noted in the staff report. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. I believe the applicant is online, and yes, you have your hand raised, and please say your name and the address. Hello, everyone. My name is John Wagman, and my address is 101 Rosebank Avenue. And I live across the street from this property. And thanks to all the commissioners for being here today and for your service, and thanks to Mr. Alexander for all of his help with these designs on this weird shaped lot, like he said. And also thanks to Councilman Withers for writing in, um, which I believe that letter will be coming up shortly. Um, I'm here to just answer any questions, if anybody has any related to this. Um, and I did have one question, if it's appropriate for Mr. Alexander on this, um, about recommendation number six, the dormers on the outbuilding. Um, given that the outbuilding is going to be used as an accessory dwelling unit, we also need to deal with the egress. So we're wondering if it would be, our architect was wondering if it's feasible if the rear dormer um, 
on the outbuilding does not meet the two foot setback requirement. Well, what we found is that it would create a strange looking well out um, between the sill and gutter line of for that rear dormer if we were to step it in two feet and we would have a difficulty creating the proper egress needed um, for that property. So with that, all I, that's all I have. Um, yeah, I can, I can answer that. Actually, since it's a DADU, the, and it's not just the guidelines, but it's actually in the ordinance that enables a uh, detached accessory dwelling unit that says the dormers have to be stepped back. So okay. we, couldn't, um, we would still have to have the, for it to be a DADU, it ha would have to meet that condition. However, you could change it to a gable or a cross gable uh, so that it, it, you know, makes it not a dormer and then it doesn't have to step back. So there are other alternatives that we can talk about with in terms of how it's designed to, to meet egress and still meet the standards. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, applicant, for working with the staff. And Ms. Ziegler, do we have any comments? Yes, we have an email from Council Member Withers. He writes, Thanks for your work with the applicant on the 106 Rosebank Avenue project design. I wanted to take a moment to write in support of the staff recommendations for this project. I was serving as the Eastwood Neighbors President when we began canvassing property owners to gauge support for expanding our neighborhood's conservation overlay in the fall and winter of 2013 and into 2014. I worked closely with the property owners on this portion of Porter Road from Rosebank Avenue up to Greenwood Avenue who had interest in preservation but also some concerns about property limitations because those houses, like this one at 1111 Porter, tend to sit on larger lots than is common for the Eastwood neighborhood, particularly since they lined what had originally been a streetcar line on Porter Road, Porter Road that stopped at Greenwood. This parcel at 106 Rosebank had been part of the backyard of the house at 1111 Porter Road and was subdivided out of the main parcel shortly after the overlay went into effect for the Porter Road parcels in 2014. The owners of the surrounding parcels on Rosebank Avenue and Waters Avenue had expressed some interest in the conservation overlay expansion at that time, but were too late to be included in the filing in 2014 that my predecessor submitted. I worked with those homeowners on a subsequent expansion of the conservation overlay in 2018, and there was great interest as the modest historic homes in that eastern portion of Eastwood lacked protections and were facing development pressures. I believe that this infill project appropriately addresses the street to form a smooth transition from the grand houses facing Porter Road to the mostly smaller and more craftsman-styled homes lining Rosebank Avenue. The subdivided lot at 106 Rosebank is small and has an unusual alley access point from the side of the lot rather than the rear. I believe that placing the outbuilding a short distance from the principal house helps to reduce the massing of the house in a manner that is appropriate for the context. The Eastwood neighborhood has long opposed attached garages, even on smaller lots, unless there are topographical grade changes that allow a pull under garage, which is not the case for this lot. But the Eastwood neighborhood has supported placing detached outbuildings close to, but visibly separate from, the principal structures on small or unusually shaped lots. This overall plan is consistent with what the Eastwood neighborhood has advocated for in the past and the architectural design elements blend well with the nearby modest historic houses on Rosebank Avenue. I appreciate everyone's, appreciate everyone's work on this proposal to find a good fit for this unusual lot. I recommend approval of the project with staff recommendations. That is the end of his email and there are no callers. Okay. We will close public hearing and have discussion by the commission. or a motion. Commissioner Price and Commissioner Mayhill. Commissioner Price first. Um, yes, uh, seeing as, well, Commissioner Mayhall may have comments or questions. Um, I, with respect to this property, would move approval with staff regularly. Okay, there is a motion and Commissioner Mayhall. Second that motion. Okay, there's a first, there's a second. 
And if there are no other discussions, we will do the roll. All right, Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Commissioner Jones? Yes. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Okay, that was unanimous, so there's no opposition, so the motion passes. We will go forward to 1707 Holly Street. And again, the number to call in by the public is 629-255-1911, and Ms. Sajit will do the presentation. This is an application to demolish an existing rear addition and to construct a new rear addition that extends wider on the left side and includes a ridge raise. The house is a circa 1925 brick bungalow that contributes to the historic character of the Lachlan Springs East End Neighborhood Conservation Zoning Overlay. The rear addition to be demolished was constructed sometime after 1957 as it does not appear on the 1957 Sanborn map. Given its construction date, location at the rear of the house, separate roof form, and different cladding materials, staff finds that demolition of the addition meets the design guidelines for appropriate demolition. The design guidelines um, state that a, a wider rear addition may be appropriate when a house is 30 feet wide and shifted on the lot. Uh, this house meets those criteria as it is approximately 30 feet wide and shifted to the right of the lot. Addition is set in two feet from both rear corners in accordance with the guidelines. It goes back 12 feet on both sides before coming out to match the width of the historic house on the right side and extending approximately nine feet, four inches wider on the left side. The wider addition has a side gabled roof form and a single story massing with a ridge height that sits approximately two feet below the existing ridge. In addition, the wider portion that will be seen from the street is primarily glazing. Given the location, massing, and design of the wider rear addition, staff finds that it can be appropriate in the situation. The addition also incorporates a ridge raise. The ridge raise meets the design guidelines as it extends no more than two feet taller than the historic house, with the side walls and eaves sitting, setting in three feet, four inches. As proposed, the rear addition does not more than double the existing footprint and depth of the house. Also, at no point is the addition both taller and wider at the same time um, than the historic house. In conclusion, staff recommends approval of the addition with conditions as set forth in the staff recommendation, finding that the request meets the design guidelines um, and the applicant has agreed to, to those conditions. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sajit. Um, is the applicant on the line? Okay. I am. And <laughs> All right. Can, <laughs> uh, your name and address, please. This is Van Pond. I am the architect of Van Pond Architect, uh, 2929 Sidco Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, 37204. Um, thank you all for keeping on going today um, and doing this digitally. Um, this, I'm going to kind of keep my comments short. We have agreed with the staff's uh, request for a five inch reveal on the um, siding and we're completely okay with that. We designed this addition to be as subordinate as a, as a well-scaled addition with modern spaces could be to what was essentially a 900 square foot bungalow. Um, we did extend it to the left-hand side from the street, but we did keep that height at the same eave bearing as the original house and it is 12 feet behind the original house um, i'm going to let you all ask questions about this um, our whole goal with this was to kind of make the addition as invisible as possible from the street while still giving our clients and homeowners uh, the things that they needed okay thank you mr pond thank you um Ms. Ziegler, do we have any public comment? We do not, and there are no callers. Okay. Since we do not have, we will close public hearing and commission will discuss or have questions to Mr. Pond or have a motion. Commissioner Price? Yes, um, looking at the plans for this, project uh, 
I felt there there was a lot going on with both the bridge raise and the side addition. And when you look at the side elevation of the house and my overall footprint footprint plan, I, I would like to have um, measurements for the, the existing historic house in terms of footprint compared to the additional square footage by the addition. Just eyeballing it to me, it looks like we're potentially approving an addition that is more than twice the size of the historic house. And I know in the past we've continually uh, denied requests to do that. So I, I'd like, if possible, a comparison of the number uh, in terms of square footage. Sure, this is Melissa Sajid. I can help you with that. Um, um, I, I measured the footprint um, using our uh, Adobe tool. Uh, and it looks like the existing with the addition that's to be removed is approximately 1,274 square feet. The addition that is to be removed uh, accounts for 315 square feet of that. Um, and I'm sorry, would you, would, you, uh, would you please repeat that so I can write it down? Sorry. Yeah, sure. So the, the total existing footprint, including what is to be demolished, is 1,274 square feet. And, and I did pull that from the property assessor's current footprint. Okay. Um, what is the, the portion that's to be removed is 315 square feet. So what the historic house, not counting that addition within. So that would be, as what Van said, about 950 to 960 square feet. Okay, and then the addition is how many? Um, the addition would be um, about 1,340 square feet when when you don't factor out what, what's being removed. Right, and, and if I'm not mistaken, the, the guidelines say that we don't count what's to be removed. Right, right. and, and I, we've had a number of cases before and the commission, it seems like, has always gone with looking at the existing footprint, so that's... That's where staff came up with that. Um, so we're, we're happy for additional guidance on um, how to interpret that. May, may I say this, Commissioner Price, could you please just maybe get closer to your um, mic because you're you're glitching out when you talk. Sure, okay, sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, just in closing, I'd like to hear what other commissioners have to say. I feel like this addition um, overwhelms the historic house. And I know just based on past experience that we've denied similar requests, in, in my opinion. So, uh, Vice Chair Stewart. Vice Chair. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Mayhall, did you have a question or comment? You have your hand raised, okay? Or discussion on Commissioner Price's concerns? Do we want clarification again? I think I kind of want to hear it again. <laughs> so uh, could you just clarify again what was the footprint of the historic house and then the addition. Sure, the um, the footprint of, I'm sorry, I had it calculated on my phone. Uh, so for the historic part of the house was about 960 square feet. The addition that is to be removed, that single story um, addition with siding is approximately 315 square feet and then the total addition to go back um, would be about 1340 square feet okay so doing the math when you're saying 960 minus 315 is that the correct math well the so based on um how how it's been interpreted in the past um, we look at the existing uh, footprint. So staff looked at the, the the existing footprint with the addition to be removed, which is 1,274 square feet, and then looked at uh, essentially the net addition that would be added to that. And when you look at it that way, um, 
the addition that would be added is uh, a little over a thousand square feet. So in that regard, you look at it that way, it would not more than double the footprint or, or the depth. Commissioner Price, does that, okay, uh, I'll keep I'll keep that just a second. Commissioner Mosley? Since there was a, you know, Commissioner Price asked for specific requests from other commissioners to comment. I, I'm, I'm looking at what's up on the screen now as Commissioner Mosley. And, and in, in terms of the figure ground of the project, the existing house, including the addition, um, the, the original addition and the new one, um, in that regard, you know, it, it passes the, the eye test. Uh, you know, I, that's, <laughs> that's not a scientific test. Um, but I, I think in my mind, it, it passes it, but th that's purely on the figure ground analysis. Uh, I, I think in looking at the house as a whole and, and seeing, um, you know, that the, the lot is, if we can move to the elevation, side elevations and front elevation, I, I see the concern in that it, it uh, the applicant and the architect are certainly taking advantage of, um, some slope down on the lot and it looks like a lot on the back of the house. Um, Melissa, can I, we look at those uh, elevations as the commissioner has requested? Thank you. You know, I, I find it it's approaching, uh, approaching the absolute max, but I think that, um, you know, it, it's, it's well, well crafted and, and uh, I, I don't, it, it is pushing right up against all, all those aspects, but I, I don't find it um, um, obscene, I guess, if you will. Not Again, not a terribly uh, articulate answer, but that you asked for a response and I've submitted one. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, the other architects have Okay, Commissioner Fitz. Yeah, I just wanted to say I um, I agree with Commissioner Mosley's comments. Um, when I look at the existing footprint, um, just kind of what we've done in the past with, with the existing footprint of the house and then what is being added onto that, it, it passes the eye test and it seems to pass the numbers as well. Um, and yeah, I feel like they have, they are kind of maxing out what is available to do, but seem to be doing that within the, the realm of what is allowed. Okay. Let's hear from uh, commissioner price. Does that help the process for your, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, as Commissioner Mosley sometimes said, this is not a hill I'm, I'm going to die on today. But I will point out that the guidelines, as written, say that we're not supposed to take into account the square footage footprint of non historic uses. So I, I just want to put that out there for people to think about. Um, so yeah. with, with, uh, beyond that, I, that's all I just wanted to raise it as an issue. Duly noted, Commissioner. Uh, Mr. Pond, we, 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 I see your hand, but we have closed public hearing. And unless the commission wants to hear from you, we will, we will recognize you. But I just wanted to give you that. Vice Chair, do you have any comments on this? I, I, um, I can see. The, the point of Commissioner Price and Commissioner Mosley and others. And um, yes, that, that's a line that we're always struggling with is especially with these small bungalow homes, uh, what we're adding onto the back of these. I, I think that this one is crafted well and has reason to believe that we designed it in accordance with what we've approved in the past. Um, I think Commissioner Price's comments worth uh, taking to heart and to evaluating as we move forward. But with respect to this project, uh, I, th I think what I'm hearing from the other commissioners and what my gut feel is, is that, uh, is that we, although it's pushing the line, it's, it's acceptable. And so with that in mind, with respect to 1707 Holly Street, 
I move for approval uh, with uh, consideration of staff recommendations. There is a motion. Is there a second? second. Okay. Commissioner Fitt? Second. All right. There's a motion. There's a second. If there's any other discussion, please raise your hand. Or if I can't see it, just say I'm here. <laughs> Uh, seeing none, uh, we'll call the roll and we'll see how this vote goes. Okay. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. And Commissioner Price? Yes? Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. We, we have uh, no opposition, which means the motion passes. All right. Thank you. And we will move forward to 1610 Gartland Avenue. And Mr. Alexander will be presenter. And again, the number to call in is 629-255-1911. All right, this is an application to enlarge an existing house with a rear addition. The addition will be narrower than the existing structure, stepped in two feet on each side, and will, the addition will be four feet taller than the existing structure. Uh, the history of the house is unusual, and I'll explain. Uh, it, it appears to have originally been a shotgun form house with a side porch and over time, it was expanded with side additions, uh, with a full width front porch, and with rear additions. Uh, the current proposal uh, is a one and one half story addition, uh, stepped in. Uh, actually, uh, this uh, this image here shows the history of the house uh, pretty well. Uh, you can see the the sandborns. Uh, from 1914 on the top and then 1951 below. Uh, that is the same structure, it's just had those additions. Uh, and then the colored image on the right shows the original footprint and then uh, what are believed to be the sequence of additions. Um, and uh, some of that is, is obviously based on the Sanborns, but also um, different floor levels from room to room uh, ages of wood being different. Okay, thank you. Um, now, um, the floor plans, as you can see, that the, um, the addition is stepped in two feet on each side on the lower level, which is actually the top image there, uh, with a porch component at the very rear uh, that is stepped in further from the left side. The upper story component will be stepped in on both sides as well. Uh, within a gable form, uh, it'll essentially be one room wide addition uh, with basically three rooms uh, from front to back. Um, moving on to the elevations, uh, you can see uh, from the front and rear elevations how far that upper story is stepped in. Um, go ahead. Yeah, so you can see where the, the shed dormer uh, is on those. And then uh, on to the, the other, uh, that's the left side. If you move to the right side, um, advance, yeah, same thing. Uh, you just see that uh, you can see that taller portion behind, uh, but it is stepped in significantly. Uh, from both sides. Uh, the materials include a split face concrete block foundation, cement fiber siding, and an unpainted metal roof, which matches the existing roof, a brick chimney. Uh, those are all compatible materials uh, with the existing structure. Uh, the proportion and pattern of window placements are appropriate. Um, the, uh, the section of the house here, looking at the, the the front elevation and uh, a photo of the front. The section on the left with the red 
front facing gable. Uh, that is what remains of the original shotgun house. All the other parts uh, have our addition. Um, with the appearance having changed so significantly, we might have had difficulty determining which parts of the building were truly contributing, uh, given the various uh, conditions and, and trying to figure out the date of construction of all the various parts. Uh, fortunately, uh, the proposal kept the 1914 through 1951 portions relatively intact. So we, we are able, able to set that conversation aside and just focus on the new addition that's proposed. Uh, the size of the original proportion and the, and the amount of changes were factors in staff to finding that the additional height here would be appropriate. Uh, some other factors that we considered uh, that were taken into account are that the house is skew on the property uh, in rel relation to the property lines. Uh, there's an easement along the left side of the lot and the lot, the grade of the lot rises steeply at the rear. Uh, and together these factors reduce the area that might have otherwise allowed for a larger one story addition footprint. Uh, again, then all that was justification in, in staff's mind for allowing additional height. Staff recommends approval of the proposed rear addition at 1610 Gartland Avenue with the condition that the window and door selection shall be approved by staff prior to construction. Meeting those conditions, we find it meets the guidelines for Lachlan Springs Conservation Zoning Overlay. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Uh, the applicant is on the line. And if you could please state your name and address. Craig, is that you? Craig, Craig, is that you? Okay, I'm gonna patch you through. Um, I know the drill, you have uh, 10 minutes, state your name and address before starting. So patch you through. Three, two, one. This is Craig Kennedy, uh, 4010 Gallatin Pike. Nashville, Tennessee, uh, we're the architects for the project. Uh, so yeah, like John said, the house has been added onto uh, numbers of times, four to five times. Uh, we submitted over time here a few different iterations uh, of the project, um, trying to work with the easement, with the you know architecture that's existing. Um, and really have tried to kind of craft the, the massing, which which we know is is pushing at that four feet taller uh, mark, but tried to craft that relative to uh, visibility. So we we've, we've done it, you know, looking at photographs which we've submitted uh, in our application, comparing photographs to 3D models and things to show sort of what's visible. Um, I don't really have much to add to Sean's other than yeah, we've tried to work around the even that's there and trying to sort of condense the footprint as much as possible to avoid some of the rear grade that starts to um, uphill. Okay, thank you. Ms. Ziegler, do we have any other public comments? There are no public comments and no callers. Okay, so with that, we will close public hearing and commission discussion or a motion. Hello? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh no. Oh, I was uh, asking for commission comments. Okay. Thank you. We might have a question for you, but oh, there we go. Uh, Commissioner Fitz. Um, I just wanted to say when I when I first looked at the elevations, especially the front elevation of this project, my immediate thought was that we can't allow an addition that's that much taller in the rear. Um, but then when I saw the, um, there's a drawing that shows the different views and has different kind of spots located around the property and shows um, how that addition um, really is not seen because the, um, 
the house, the original house kind of obstructs that view. And so I just, I found those very compelling, um, very compelling kind of making the case for allowing, um, allowing the, the additional height to the rear. I think there's, okay, Commissioner Jones. Yeah, I was just gonna chime in and say, I, I agree completely with Commissioner Fitz. Um, that's what I was uh, looking at. That was kind of my same thought process. Um, I think that they've worked well with the lot constraints. Um, you know, it, it, it's a, yeah, you know, it is taller, but again, I, you know, I just don't think it's, uh, massive you know massively visible and i just i think it works well with the with the design of the house and um how how the lot how the lot is um so i i am inclined to um accept uh with staff recommendations i i do have this is uh, chair and i want to just ask a question we do have guidelines that say we can go to a max height what, what is that max height was it two foot? I, I, and I can't just want to refer that. Um, we discourage additions being taller generally, but there are certainly situations where uh, they can be appropriate or even necessary. We, we allow um, two foot ridge raise additions routinely. Uh, and um, for an addition, that doesn't impact a house, but is behind the house and can be two feet taller is not quite as routine. Uh, and then we certainly have allowed additions to be as tall as four feet taller when there, when there are stronger lot constraints or, or the, the more cumbersome lot constraints get, uh, we have, you know, cross that from two foot being relatively routine to occasionally four foot tall. Okay, thank you for that. Any other comments, commissioners? If not, is there a motion? Vice Chair Stewart. Uh, with respect to 1610 Gartland Avenue, um, I move for approval with staff recommendations. Okay, Commissioner Price. A second. All right, there's a first and a second. With no other questions and no hands raised, I will pose the roll. Vice Chair Stewart. Yes. Commissioner Fitz. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Mayhall. Yes. Commissioner Mosley. All right, yes, I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Price? Yes. Okay, all in favor, and there are no opposition, so the motion passes. We have 1501 Fatherland. It's our last item. And Robin? This is not a public hearing, but a request for a rehearing. Um, so Mr. Dickerson's on the line as well if you have further questions. You may remember a request to demolish 1501 Fatherland Street and you initially voted to defer in January and then to disapprove at the February 19th meeting. And the applicant now requests a rehearing. Your rules of order state, no such request to grant a rehearing shall be considered unless new evidence is submitted which could not have reasonably been presented at the previous hearing and you've received that written request in your packet. If you wish to rehear, the motion must be made by a commissioner who voted against demolition in February. So that would be Commissioner Jones or Mayhall, Vice Chair Stewart, or Chairman Bell. Four concurring votes are needed to grant the rehearing. If granted, the case will be heard at the next public hearing. Since this is not a public hearing, the applicant is not present. Again, it's not your task to rehear the case now or to discuss the merits of their argument, but to simply determine if they have shown that there is new information available. Any questions of, of me or Mr. Dickerson? Vice Chair Stewart. 
Uh, yes, no, that's not a question. Uh, it's uh, it's a comment. Uh, you know, I, I read the letter in the staff report and uh, searched through that letter for any additional information that was beyond what we considered in the past. The only information was that a tornado had gone through the neighborhood. So but there was no mention of any um, effect on the house or how it may have changed the condition of the house. So, uh, so I actually drove by to see if anything uh, and other than a gutter and a window, I didn't see anything that would be additional information that would affect our deliberations or our decision. It's uh, tragic what's happened in that neighborhood, but I did not see extensive uh, damage that would warrant reconsideration uh, on this particular property. Thank you, Commissioner. I'd like to hear from Commissioner Jones uh, and or Mayhall as well, since we uh, were on the, on the first one. Sure, uh, Commissioner Jones here, and um, yeah, I was uh, a dissenting vote in the original, but I agree with Commissioner Stewart. Um, I I believe what the letter is saying is the neighbor, the surrounding neighborhood, uh, since the tornado came through, I think it, they're mainly saying that the the neighbor, the historic, you know, neighborhood has been changed so much given the tornado and i don't see that as the case or anything that um would be uh anything regarding to rehearing this case so uh i um i i would vote uh in, in opposition to rehear the case commissioner mayhall i can concur with commissioner stewart and and commissioner jones and as chair, I too would also concur um, that the oh the um, tornado did not affect this particular contributing structure, and thus uh, again going back to Vice Chair Stewart saying if the letter had given some additional new information concerning this historical structure, then you know, we, we would consider it, but at this point, not. So um, we do need to take a roll call. I need a motion. Oh, we, oh yes, we, we need a motion, please. Uh, Vice Chair. So, this is, this is uh, Commissioner Stewart. I, with, um, with respect uh, to 1501 Fatherland Street, uh, I move that we deny the request to rehear. Okay, there's a motion, is there a second? Mr. Price? Second. All right, there's a first, a second, and I will take roll call. Vice Chair Stewart? Uh, yes. Commissioner Fitz? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Mayhall? Yes. Commissioner Mosley? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Uh, Robin, do we have any other items to discuss? No more to discuss in terms of the public hearing or um, anything to vote on. But I did want to let you know that you next month will be voting for your officers. We do this every two years. So you'll be voting for your chair and vice chair. So I just wanted to bring it up today in case you wanted to have some initial discussions, but that will be a vote before you next month. Okay. We thank you for the heads up. Uh, any other comments, commissioners? Otherwise, I want to thank everyone again on behalf of the commission to applicants and a staff, the IT, Metro IT has definitely had its challenges earlier today, but we have cleared that up and maybe we will or will not have another uh, teleconference next month, but everyone be safe. Thank you again and stay healthy. Stay well. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.org.